Anybody else is up for sprints today? All right, we're here, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so excited we're here. And Yay. I've got Jenny with me today. I'm so happy to have you, Jenny. Thank you for joining me. I'm I was excited really excited here. when I saw your vlog recently and you were like, well, I would like to get on some sprints at some point with somebody. And, and that moment where I was like, let put it out there in the universe and then maybe it'll happen for me. So thank you. It was for brilliant. Me. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. I was like, oh, well, I haven't really invited anybody for my sprints this month because I've been trying to, one of my goals for this year was to do sprints every month, at least once. And so and I hadn't invited anybody yet. So I was like, well, this must be meant to be because Jenny's <laughs> asking for someone. <laughs> I was very excited. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like your channel and, and, uh, what kind of books you tend to focus on? I mean, I know, but let's let everybody else know. Yeah. Um, so I have been, I've been on YouTube for longer than I care to think about at this moment. Um, but I sort of, I used to make a ton of videos and now I don't make quite as many. Um, but I read mainly literary fiction, um, science fiction and then some contemporary mostly like queer YA because I feel like I missed out on that when I was a teenager so it's like now it's my jam um and I have a TBR game that I play which is actually how I found your channel Amy is because I like every month I go in and put in like TBR game and see what else is new so whenever I find a new one that is fun I always add it to the queue to listen to watch every month yeah Absolutely love those. Two. Yeah. TBR games are my favorite time of the TBR period of the month is my favorite time of the month. For sure. And <laughs> yeah. Your game is so much fun. And I've been so impressed with the, cause you're very creative. So like all the artwork you do, but then, you know, you create these, these games of other people's games and it's just, you, it blows me away all the time. So. I just I, like I, to craft. So it's like, every time I see a new one, I'm like, Ooh, I could make that. <laughs> I also have my, I may or may not have printed out, uh, time oh, cool so that we could spin the wheel for times if we wanted to so oh, that's a yes yes I came prepared <laughs> oh my gosh that's fantastic and your whatever thon uh your whatever thon board that you created that was really cool too oh so it's our, i don't think you can hang up on your wall uh, it's right there oh yeah oh that's amazing oh, you're good yeah. you're, you're close to a blackout aren't you that's the funny thing is the re the two books I'm reading will give me nearly a blackout, but yet I have zero bingos at this moment. Oh. oh. I'm like, how did that even happen? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the way of it, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we got a shell. Hey, shell. Hello. Welcome, Alicia. We've got, that's my mom, just so you know. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, hey, hello. How you doing? remember name hello and nicole welcome nicole so what are you gonna read today what do you plan on reading today um i started the guide by peter heller this morning um so i've been reading this and i was i will say i was really surprised because i thought this was just like another one of his thrillers and apparently it's like kind of a sequel to the river but it wasn't marketed that way. So I'm like, if somebody went into this, they would spoil themselves for the river. Like, oh. so heads up to anybody who wants to read that one. But yeah. Have you read the river? I have. Yeah. Okay. That's what made me interested in this one because the nature writing in that one was just so good. So yeah, that's what I'm reading. And I'm also. Animorphs. <laughs> Are you do you're doing the whole series, right? All of them? Yeah. Re I, I say rereading because I thought that I read them in middle school, but I'm pretty sure I only got to like book five because about book eight is when I was like, I don't remember this. And this is really dark. <laughs> is it really? It is so dark. Yeah, I, I have actually, I haven't watched Gavin's vlog where he mm -hmm. read the whole series in like a weekend or something, which blows my mind because I've been rereading these for like two years and I'm halfway through. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how anybody could mentally take the amount of things that happen to those kids in a weekend. It's, yeah, so it's dark. That's Gavin. <laughs> yeah, he, the, the challenges he does, it just blows my mind. He's pretty silly in a yeah. good way. Like, and he's, he's so fun. Um, I 
I've only ever heard of Animorphs through BookTube. Like, that wasn't a thing in my childhood. And is that a common, like, I was thinking a lot of people I've heard it from are different British BookTubers. Is it a common American thing or is it more of a UK thing? I or actually don't know. So they started coming out, I guess, when I was in middle school. Yeah, roughly when I was in middle school. So, like, they were new in the stores when I was in middle school. And it was like, people who were reading like Goosebumps. I think some people started reading them. I found out about them. I guess I may have read one of them before the Nickelodeon show came out, but then there was a TV show on Nickelodeon um, about maybe 10 books into the series. And so that's kind of where I got into them. My friends and I were weirdly into them too. That's why I was like, did I, did I really only read to book five? Cause we, we were going hard to have only read like five books. <laughs> Everything feels so much bigger when you're a kid, doesn't it? Like, so oh, five, honestly, it seemed like so many <laughs> yeah, don't know. picked characters that we were. And I was Cassie, which now having read it, I'm like, yeah, yep. <laughs> Gosh, I got to read them. They She's do look like really the, creepy. Yeah. Oh, God. They're, I skim some of the, uh, some of the, they like detail describe morphing from human to animal. And so I skim that because it's like true body horror. And I'm like, are the kids who read these in middle school okay? Because I feel like this is, <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I never, I guess I never got into that. It just, I'd never even heard of it. And I don't think I never saw the uh, Nickelodeon show either. So it missing short -lived. out. Short -lived. <laughs> <laughs> Did it show all the morphs like the, you know, oh goodness. Yeah. There's a, one of the, the kids from, um, from X-Men was Jake. I can't, I don't remember who he is in X-Men, but he was Jake in Animorphs. And so the first time I saw X-Men, I was like, that's Jake. And my husband was like, nobody knows that. Stop saying that. <laughs> Your husband an Animorphs fan too? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't think people our age care about this book, sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. I'm like, well, I never. I feel like I, I read a lot of like Shell saying down here. She says, uh, I remember seeing them in our neck of the woods because Shell and I grew up together. She says, but I graduated to adult books when we were kids, when kids were getting into them. So we read a lot of adult books when we were when we were in high school or younger. And so I think, like you said, you didn't read a lot of the YA queer books when you were younger, and you're getting into it now. I'm reading a lot of YA too now because I just didn't ever get that. I didn't ever get to experience the angst when I was. <laughs> I was that age <laughs> yeah I read I, it's funny because the other series I read I remember vividly reading when I was in middle school was also by Catherine Applegate and apparently in the UK they call it like it's like something island which is totally you know you could put that on a book cover and put it out in the US those series the series name was the making out series oh and I'm like That's why also why did my mother think that my mom was like it's fine she just <laughs> Just read what you read. It's, uh, same with my mom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make, oh, that's not, that's icky. Mm. <laughs> the making out. Those series. I will not be rereading. <laughs> <laughs> You're not curious. Not <laughs> the least bit curious. No, I remember them vi vividly being incredibly trashy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nothing, and, I was, and not, you know, people like that. That's not my style anymore. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was reading trashy adult books when I was that age. So, I mean, you know, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a Ruby here. Welcome, Ruby. Yay. I loved when you uh, played Ruby's game that one time. That was a lot of fun. Um, oh, I like her game a lot. Yeah. It's fun. The, tic -tac the guide stuff is so good when you talked about it in your TBR. Thanks for the warning. Oh, yeah. So, definitely don't read the guide first. Uh, it also has uh, some, it, it talks about COVID, which also shocked me. <laughs> so it's really new. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it doesn't refer to it by name, but it, it alludes to it. And I was like, what is half? I was like, what book am I reading? <laughs> so. <laughs> is the writing style so far as good as it was before? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's super interesting and engrossing. So I'm excited to see where it goes. It also talks a lot about fishing, so. 
Oh, okay. I don't know if I'm so much interested in like fly fishing part of it, but we'll see. It's supposed to be like an art form. <laughs> uh, mom's reading the inheritance games for these sprints halfway through and loving it. Very suspenseful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that one's a popular one. And um, Alicia's trying to finish Shadow of Night. That's the second Deborah Har Harkness book. 60, 160 okay. pages left, then I can watch the playback of the live show. Yeah, we just had a live show for that. So our, our read along group is reading the All Souls trilogy. So we're. Mm, okay. We just had a live show and um, we're going to be ready for the next one. Uh, so, <laughs> Alicia's from Michigan. Remember seeing those books when the Animorph books? Okay, so you know, I just may have missed it, missed out on that that Animorphs train. It doesn't sound like I'm missing heavy hitters too much. for the Scholastic <laughs> Book Fair. Like at one point, they were like heavy hitters for the Scholastic Book Fair. Except my one where I saw it the first time because they are published by Scholastic. Okay, I love Scholastic Book Fairs. I just don't remember Animorphs. Yeah, I wish we had. I know I saw something from I don't remember what the the publishing company is or the the main company, but they were trying to get together adult Scholastic book fairs at some point. I did and see I'm that. Really, yeah, I don't I'm hoping that it happens. <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> is that any different than just going to a bookstore? <laughs> Mentally, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. What kind of question? Well, then, can you? You can get prizes. Did, when did we get prizes from Scholastic Book Fairs and stuff like that? Or is that? I, I honestly don't remember. I remember the thing where you had, there's like a computer game that you, you had to, or like a computer thing where you put in all the books you read during a year and then you got pizza or something. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Like, you know, those the rewards for, for yeah. succeeding, succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the other Amy here. Hello, Amy. Welcome. And Mary, hey Mary, hopefully going to be editing a vlog and then I have to start a new book. What book will you be starting? Going to be reading European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman. That sounds fun. That, that sounds a sound lot fun. of fun. European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman. That sounds like a YA fantasy, like steampunk sort of thing. At my school, they do contests during the fair. Okay, mm. so maybe my school did that, and that's why we got, like, little rewards and things like that. I'm a teacher's kid, so, like, after hours, I would just, like, go back in there. And, and no chill. <laughs> <laughs> you were the troublemaker, weren't you? <laughs> I really was. <laughs> <laughs> What's your older sibling like? Are, are they, you know... We are night and day she is a cpa accountant um so well i guess we're night and day she's the troublemaker now because get some alcohol in her and she loses all filter and suddenly it's like you're embarrassing everyone please stop my whole family are you kidding <laughs> me and my life people don't if they see us standing side by side no one would ever think we were siblings though we look nothing alike Really? So who do you look more like? I look like my mom. I act like my dad. And she looks like my dad and kind of acts like my dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's really funny. And then um, my my toddler looks like her baby pictures. Oh, wow. Like so everybody's like, which one of you does it does your baby look like? And I was like, neither of us. He looks like my sister <laughs> and my true. dad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's funny how that works out. I look a lot like my grandma, but I mm. kind of am a pretty, I'm a mix. Like I don't have a, you know, some people look just like one other person in their family, just like their mom, just like their dad. I definitely don't. I look very much like a mixture of things, of genes within my family pool. <laughs> <laughs> Makes I'm me also the only, the only redhead in my entire family. Oh, really? Hmm. Wow, you got that recessive, like super recessive gene, huh? Yeah, I've never met a living relative. Like none of my living relatives have red hair. It's weird. <laughs> oh, that is weird. That's cool, though. I love that. I love yeah. I love genetics. I think it's fascinating. It's very interesting. What did your parents think of that one? <laughs> you came out with my mom hair. said when, yeah, when I was born, she went, 
what color is her hair? Because it was I had hair when I was born and it was like copper penny red. And she was like, what? <laughs> oh, that is cool. What? A, that's really cool, though. That's that's fun. My grandma. No, my mom always wanted a redhead child. and I didn't end up being redhead for her. I know that was my we didn't find out when, when we had our son, we didn't find out his uh, gender before he was born. So it was a surprise when he was born. But and I was like, because I truly just don't care. It's not important to me. Um, and but the first thing I said was, what color's the hair? And my husband was like, it's brown. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> Are there any redheads in your, your husband's family? Yeah. Oh, OK. So that would have been a possibility. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That would have been cool. Uh, Mary says, I don't know either yet. I don't know yet. Either Days of Awe by A.M. Holmes or In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. That one is super popular. In My Dreams I, I Hold a say, Knife. I was going to say, I've heard a lot about that one. Yeah. I'm always nervous about the super hyped ones. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always, you know, it does make me, you know, when you hear about them over and over again, you're like, oh, I kind of, it sounds interesting. And, you know, I don't read a ton of thriller. Not that I don't like them, just I don't read a ton of them. So part of me wants to kind of see you know, where my sweet spot is with thrillers. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And Shell says, yeah, raffles and such. So I guess, yeah, maybe schools did it more so than Scholastic Book Fair or, or whatnot. I don't know. Uh, it is a sequel to The Strange Case. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. I should have known that. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed, Amy. And Shell says, my family doesn't need to be embarrassed. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. That is accurate. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, yeah. So, so what are you reading? Well, I am going easy right now. I'm reading a uh, manga. So I'm oh, on okay. volume four fruits basket. And so I'm doing a 48 hour, I'm doing the, whatever you, whatever thon 48 hour you thon. And I'm trying to get in a lot of my smaller, easier books for this weekend because I can't. <laughs> so <laughs> it's this is one that's been sitting on my my cart for a while and it needs to go back to the library. So I need to get it finished. I have never I was never into anime, never had any desire to be into anime and then wasn't really didn't really have any huge desires for manga. But Shell, my friend, she is obsessed with this particular one and she always loved anime. So I was like, okay, well, you know, everybody's into manga, everybody's doing manga. Let, let me just try it. So um, I tried this one out and it's, you know, it, it's different. Like this format, like graphic novels and manga in general, they're different and it's just taken me a while to get used to them. But once I'm getting, especially this series, I'm just having a lot of fun with it, but it's weird. <laughs> like the thing I've heard a lot about that series, but I've never read it. It's a lot older apparently. And you know, it's got a big fan base. So, but there is an anime series that's was from 2000, 2019 I think when it was when it put when it was put out and it's actually really good and it helps because there's like 20 million characters in this so trying to keep track of the different characters watching the anime so like I never thought I'd be the person watching an anime it's a new Amy I don't who am I <laughs> so that's my easy that's my easy read that I'm, I'm working on right now so we'll see how it goes and let's see yeah mom's it says it's true. My mom has spent many, many times embarrassing Shell in particular, actually, out in public and stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> got a fun group, an embarrassing group. My family's very loud and they're not very shy about it being uh, tawdry. <laughs> That's fun, though. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> not when you're a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm from the South, so I have a very stereotypically, like, Southern family where everybody just is overly polite. And sometimes it's just like... <sighs> you want a little, a little bit of a little craziness? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you can you can borrow my family anytime you want to be embarrassed. <laughs> anytime you want. <laughs> I'm a sharing person. <laughs> Alicia hasn't read Fruits Basket, but I've watched a bit of the anime. And yeah, it's really cute. It's really weird. It's very dramatic, but like I've gotten into it. You know, I'm like, I just keep getting more and more excited. They have no filters. No, they don't have any filters whatsoever. So yeah. Anytime you want, Jenny. My family is for <laughs> your family now. <laughs> Take a 
them off my hands. <laughs> All right. Well, do would you like to spin your wheel for the first time? Oh, we Not can. for any time, but I mean, like for our first sprint. Let's get going. I Let's think I'm ready. See if I can actually. I'm really bad That's at like so knowing cool. where the camera actually is. I love that you put that together. Good. Are we in? We're in frame. Yeah. Okay. You're in. What does it say? I don't know. Oh, it's 60 minutes. Oh, we're starting big. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Then I can finish my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, let me get our banner set up. Um, I just have a banner because because it's easier. Yep. So we're going to go to 20. We're going to go from 20 to 20. And it's going to look really funny. <laughs> but this will give us time to do whatever we need to do and read some a, a bit. So, um, good. yeah, awesome. Thank you. And thank you so much for doing that. That is so cool. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Okay, are you ready? We're ready? Yeah, let's go. Excited? Let's sprint. Good luck, everybody. Oh, yeah.
All right. We're close enough. <laughs> How's it going? How'd your reading go? Good. I was frowning at that last part. So I was like, what is happening? <laughs> is it like super quirky or just all over the place? It's just one of those things where it's like you you have no idea what is going on and so like the character is looking at something and trying to like understand it but it's completely doesn't make any sense to the character so it doesn't make any sense to you either and so I'm like like I know this will come together but like what is actually happening <laughs> that that can be a fun thing it could also be a very frustrating thing <laughs> it reads really fast though so that's, yeah that's quick yeah that's good. Yeah, that's really good. It was good. I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's. I mean, these are so, like, super dramatic and that's not like think about there. Super dramatic and quirky, and it's um, but charming. You know, very charming. So as silly as it is at times, and dramatic, they're they're very dramatic. It's still a lot of fun. So I've I've been enjoying this series way more than I ever expected to enjoy like a manga like this, or any manga. <laughs> So it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah. And the characters are just so goofy. And there's a lot of different, there's one character that's like a, she previously was part of, when she was in middle school, she was part of a, a gang, like, um, you know, like she was a, she was a total bruiser. Oh, you froze in a very happy position. <laughs> oh no. Um, but let's see. Let's catch up on this then. Amanda was napping during the sprint. That's wonderful. Hopefully your nap went really well, Amanda. And Kayla came. Oh, and I, Ruby was saying that this is a good sprint to clean up and, and read. Hope you got some reading done, Ruby. Um, Kayla, back at the beach. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I liked it because you froze in this really happy uh po you know <laughs> it was great i don't know like uh, you just look so happy <laughs> this is what like i have this is my office like my work from home office but my computer that i use for work is hardline internet so like it actually has an ethernet cord connected for some reason my laptop just suddenly will be like i don't know what internet is <laughs> <laughs> does not compute does not compute <laughs> so that's fun <laughs> <laughs> you looked so happy when you cut out, so that was perfect. It was <laughs> very lovely. <laughs> See, we've got a Kim. Hello, Kim. I'll be in and out having have curry on the way. Ooh, delicious. Mm. Hope everyone is well. Yep, doing well. Magda's here. Happy Sunday. Uh, let's see. I got three pages and a bunch of cleaning done. Very, very responsible, Alicia. <laughs> 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 I read one short story from Days of Awe and finished editing my vlog. Woohoo! Love getting Ooh. those vlogs done. I managed a couple of pages of Fool's Quest. Awesome. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Let's see. 100, of course, Shell. Overachiever. 120 pages. <laughs> what are you reading? You must be reading a YA because 100. Oh, no, we did an hour, didn't we? Okay, that, that's more reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> 30 pages of Heroes, Hero of Ages. Oh, fantastic, mm. Mac. Fantastic. Hello. Welcome, Becca. I'm just joining you now. How much longer will you go today? Well, we just finished our first sprint, so it's it's really up to... <laughs> we'll have to see how we feel. It was a long sprint, but it was good. It got a lot accomplished. <laughs> it actually went faster than I thought it was going it, to. It did. I was going to say that the wheel did us dirty, but it, I don't know, it went faster than I, than I expected, too. Yeah, I figured I would get the whole book done in that time, and it sure didn't happen that way. <laughs> that was cool, though. I love that. That just the, the creativity. I just love it. And I oh, I've been enjoying your pottery, by by the way. I, I don't think oh. I mentioned that, but I, I really been enjoying your pottery a lot. So, did you start doing pottery recently, or is this something you've been doing for a while? So, I've always been interested in it, but um, I didn't even know that you could take classes, and then when I was trying to find, I like to do like things for my dad, like where we do something together. 
Uh, he's a stuff person. So I had found a class locally that was like, get your hands dirty. And it was like a, a three hour class where you just, you know, played with wheel throwing. And then when we were there, we were talking to the instructor and he was like, yeah, this is a functioning studio. And like, you can be a member of the studio. We do classes. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be a member. And then the pan pandemic happened because that was January of 2020 is when we did the get your hands dirty. And then um, after we were able to get vaccinated, we I went ahead and scheduled a class for me to take like a wheel one, um, which I, I did. It was like my birthday present to myself. <laughs> and I took a wheel one class last summer and really loved it and got on the wait list for their studio membership. So it's really been a recent thing, but it's been a lot of fun. I still have so much to learn. I watch some of the people in the studio and I'm like, Right. I'm just lucky if I get a cylinder sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's exciting though. Like the, 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 the prospect of having a lot to learn and then knowing you're going to see improvement and stuff. That's always, I, know, I think that's pretty thrilling. It's so fun. It's just fun to be able to like bring home something I made and like use it. I have like two mugs, three mugs that I put handles on two weeks ago. And I was supposed to go down there today and get them on the, the shelf to go in the kiln. And I was like, mm-mm. It's, it's 30 minutes to the studio. I am not feeling it. <laughs> so I know that certain pottery is not safe to drink out of, but is it like certain types that you can use for it, you know, for eating and drinking and stuff out of? Is it mm -hmm. in the clay? Um, I mean, I think it has to do with whether or not there's lead in the glaze or the clay. So, um, and the thing, and with, I don't think I have anything that's not, no, it's not all up here. Oh yeah, right here. So, this is like a vase and ooh, there we go this oh, part right here is raw clay that was just it doesn't have glaze on it mm -hmm. and that part is not safe for food or drink oh. because it like the clay is still porous to an extent mm -hmm. so like it would get bacteria in it whereas like this is like glass so it won't so if it's unglazed then it's not good for food it's not food safe no so. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, I wasn't sure because I know that sometimes you'll buy or you'll you'll buy pottery from places and they're like, you know, it's like a mug or a bowl or something, and it's like not safe for food consumption. I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> okay, good to know. That's good to know. Let's see, read about 51 pages. My heart is in my throat. Very suspenseful. Ooh, the inheritance gains. I've heard so many good things about that one. So it oh, sounds dear. like she's having a lot of fun with it. Alicia doesn't want to be you, but you were, you cleaned, you're more, more than I but you did. you got it out of the way now. Yeah, now you don't have to be responsible at all. <laughs> <laughs> I barely read anything, just clean. Oh, Ruby, come do my next. I oh, know, same. <laughs> <laughs> These people with all this energy on a Sunday, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, let's see, Kim read two pages, Shell read 120. Yeah. <laughs> We can't compare ourselves, Kim, to Shell. We know this, right? <laughs> Kim and I talk about this all the time because we're both fairly medium paced to slower readers. And so, we're, you know, compared to a lot of people on BookTube who are like super hardcore readers, we're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just can't compare because it'll just be too painful. I uh, know these people who read like 20 books a month. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, how <sighs> they're just so fast, too. It's terrible. <laughs> It's amazing. terrible. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and terrible. <Yeah. laughs> <It's both. laughs> so it was a middle grade. Okay. Well, then that 120 doesn't feel as, yeah. Serafina and the Splintered Heart. And Danielle's here. Hello, Danielle. Happy Sunday. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Ruby says, I was cleaning very slowly. That's why no energy. Okay. Well, <laughs> you're still cleaning. <laughs> Still cleaning. Me. <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> like, mm -mm. <laughs> no desire. Yeah. So, have you been? Um, have you been pretty? Like, are you reading specific books for whatever a thon? Like, trying to get your prompts fulfilled, or are you reading just basically what's on your TBR and and hoping that they fulfill your prompts? Um, I tried to work the prompts into my TBR and I did an okay job. Um, but yeah, I've got like, 
There's like a stack. <laughs> try to point. There's a stack right beside it where it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, where it's like the books, and then there's other ones that fit the different prompts and just things I'm in the mood for. Luckily, most of the prompts are pretty. Like you can find things, but the ones that are like portal fantasy are the things that I'm like, I, I, I barely know what that means. <laughs> Have you read any of the Sean and McGuire um, Wayward Children series? At I all? read the first one and I did not like it. <laughs> you didn't like it at all. I yeah. think the second one's a lot better, but yeah, if you didn't like the first one at all, if you weren't jiving with your style, but that is, I'm trying to think of what other portal fantasies. I'm going to be reading Narnia this month, so, or, you know, mm. and so that I think of as portal fantasies. Maybe people can give us suggestions in the comment section down below. Like, I'm sort of like maybe saying that this is a little bit because there's something in this one that has to do with time travel, and I'm like, that's, Ooh. time is yeah. a portal. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> so are th all the Animorphs, do they get have like the same vibe when you read them? Are they kind of it's like a similar pattern? You know, like a lot of those older children, you know, middle grade books have like a pattern that each of them follow. Is Animorphs like that at all? For the most part, yeah. Um, the like main series books, because this is, this is a Megamorphs, which are honestly terrible usually. Um, but they add to the plot, so like I don't want to leave them out. But um they all start off the regular series ones with like my name is and then it's whoever the the character is because each one of them is told like alternately by the different characters um but then it'll be like i can't tell you my name because and they'll literally reiterate over like the whole first chapter is essentially them saying like why they can't tell you and i'm like I, there's 52 books of this series if you're on book like 48 we know why you can't tell us your name please stop <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's kind of like formulaic in that like there's always something that they have to fight um, that has to do with the Yerks, and yeah, it's it's much very much like the the other series of its time where it's it's there's a pattern, and then these are just like what is happening. There's like time travel. One of them there were dinosaurs. One of them they got like randomly time traveled to a a jungle somewhere. It they they're. they're they're Weird. frankly awful, but I... <laughs> <laughs> but you're in it. You're in it. <laughs> I'm committed. <laughs> How many are there in total? Um, there's 52 in like the base series, and then there's I think four Chronicles books and four Megamorphs, so it's like 60, I think, total. Wow. I'm That's halfway. Okay. Halfway. You've done well. You've done very well. Yeah, I'm crazy. I found the ebooks on like somebody. Somebody made epubs of like the entire series and put them out there on Reddit. And I like fly through them on ebook. So. And why is that? Why do you think it's faster on ebooks? Ah, uh, I mean, part of it is that these things make me sneeze because <laughs> it's old paper. <laughs> so like, I don't want to pick them up. I don't know. Yeah. And also no, no, you can just sense. like read it like whenever I'm, I have a free moment somewhere, I have it on my phone. I can just like read a chapter because the chapters are like four pages. <laughs> okay. That's, that's oh. nice and, and easy to get there. You're like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. that's good. Yeah. Well then, you know, I think time travel absolutely works. Diane is here. Better late than never. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're never late. You're just on time. Alicia says, good opportunity for her to join the Narnia read-along. Yeah, we're doing Narnia this summer. So if you felt like reading Narnia... I've never read them. I've only read Magician's Nephew. So um, I had uh, one of my 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 friend, my booktuber friends reached out to me and was like, let's read Narnia. So I was like, okay. And I, I have a bind-up of the whole series. I just have never got a chance to read it yet. So we're doing that this summer. And fingers crossed we get to it. <laughs> let's see daughter of smoke and bone is a portal fantasy series it's technically time travel but midnight library feels like a portal fantasy adjacent to me yeah have you read uh midnight library at all mm -mm. look Are we're any... playing fast and loose with these rules <laughs> <laughs> this bingo problem exactly <laughs> just make it work just happen to read lumberjane <laughs> that has a portal the fourth volume uh, that and that's nice because then you could add just a graphic novel make that nice is and true they, there are some portals in those. Strange Dreamer works. Yeah, I guess it does. 
Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, there's a lot of, I guess, you know, the, the, the idea of being a portal fantasy, what constitutes a portal, we just make up our own rules. <laughs> basically. I mean, that's yeah. basically what she said for all of them is just make it up, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Do we... I'm trying to think if there's anything that's going to be difficult for me. I think the one that was going to was going to be the hardest was the host fave mm. because I didn't plan on reading any of the host faves. So there are a couple that are shorter on there. So I'm going to yeah, try and read the, the, the monk and the robot, which that one. Yeah, yeah. We're going oh, the little cute. and then the little wagon and oh, that's adorable. Oh that's my gosh. Cap. And as the one time I ever use, they're from a PR package because um, they sent. I got the second one from Tor, and the second one's even better than the first one. I was sad it's not out this month because, like, you can read the second in a series for host favorite, and I feel like everybody would really enjoy that. So that's a bummer, but yeah, that one's short and really, really sweet. The first book in that series. Okay, I, I definitely need to get to that one, and they're nice and. That's on my list of possibilities for this month. We'll see. I just, I have a lot of books that I want to read. And <laughs> I have not enough time. I know for host, that's that one's hard for me too. The two that I have, I have Darius the Great is not okay. I saw that. That I yeah. got from the library. And then my hold for Iron Widow came up on the library audiobook app. So those are my options. I've been hearing amazing things about Iron Widow. I don't think I've heard any negative reviews on that one. Yeah, I've heard incredible things about that. Yeah, another another one of those books that who knows when I'll get to it. <laughs> I know. I was like, none of these are the things I want to be reading right now, but I want to. I want to black out on this board. <laughs> yeah, like, can't you guys pick other favorites? <laughs> the favorites that are on my PBR, <laughs> right? Yeah. Can't you know me better, <laughs> me random person that you don't yeah. know at all? Exactly. What's going? What's going on? <laughs> uh, I'm reading Amari. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, a I love one. that one. I was hoping yeah. the second one of that one would be out in time too, but nope. It's it's August. August. Mm -hmm. That's so soon too. Oh, that's so good. Wow. Yeah, there's good. There, I really loved Amari. It was so good. I want to reread it. I mm -hmm. think I can't remember if I listened to it on audio. I think I listened to it on audio, but I want to reread it physically because it was just so so good. And yeah. it warrants a reread. I've been enjoying. Um, I was talking about this recently on one of my my things. I've read a lot of older fan older fantasy lately older middle grade fantasy and i've been reading a lot of you know i've read a lot of younger middle grade fantasy and i love the way we do fantasy nowadays like it's so different but it is so mm -hmm. more uh like feelings and individual focused and character driven than it used to be and i enjoy that and i think amari is like a really good example of that yeah it, that one is so good it's like, I feel like if, if anybody likes Nevermore, like, then they would absolutely love Amari because those two, to me, are very similar in, like, tone. Mm -hmm. but, I haven't yeah. read Nevermore yet, so you need to read that. It's good. Okay. The fourth I, one I, comes I, out I, in December. <laughs> in December? The fourth one, yeah, I think. Or is it the fifth one? Fourth one, yeah. Okay. I got some catching up to do. Which, yeah. <laughs> Amy says, just finished wardrobe yesterday. And so Amy's ahead of, I haven't even started mm. those yet. <laughs> I have until the 26th. So. <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. I'm listening and I'm about 30% through. Okay. Yeah. It's really good. And the audiobook was really, really good. Yeah. I listened to the audiobook too. Yeah. Amy loved Amari and Nevermore is so good. Yeah. Another one that I feel like whenever I hear people talking about um, Nevermore, it's mostly the people who I hear screaming the loudest are people who really don't like middle grade at all. And they're like, I don't like middle grade, but I love Nevermore. I've so. heard that too. I think it has some pretty universal appeal. <laughs> it's well, very so quirky. And that's what I liked about it. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got I to gotta pick up that one because it's just, I, we're, I've been intrigued by it for a while, but it just hasn't happened yet. I think that was on someone's favorite. On, um, was it? I feel like thing? it was. 
Hold on. I will have forgotten them both by the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Well, we'll try to remind you what, what they're all about. Um, yeah, I feel like that was someone's favorite as well, Nevermore. I don't think it was Gavin's, because Gavin's was... Oh, uh, it's um, Roe. Okay. And Amari is Gavin's. Yeah. I'm surprised Gavin didn't put... What is his other favorite? Frostheart on there. I was about to say I... Frostheart, yeah. It's what I think of when I think of Gavin. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's another series uh, that I need to. I, I read the middle grade. Uh, I've read, what's that other one? The Polar Bear Explorers Club. That's the middle grade, you know, polar fantasy that I've read more recently. And that was cute. It was really, really cute. But I haven't read Frostheart or some of the other popular polar fantasies. Yeah, me either. There's so many. There's just too many. I know. I'm like every time I'm like I'm gonna read the books I own, and then as soon as I get like this month, I've done really good, and I'm reading a lot of the books I own, and then immediately out of nowhere, I'm like I should buy all the books. <laughs> I'm like this is why my TBR never goes down. It's because as soon as I read like six books on my TBR, I'm like that means I could buy six books. <laughs> You know, it's terrible and there's just and well and that's the thing about like you know being in the booktube community and whatnot you're always constantly hearing about these new books and so yeah. like more so than before i i really got into this community i, I would go to the bookstore and I, there was nothing i mean i would be interested in books and of course i like books but it wasn't the same draw the same pool as now when i know about all the books and i've heard everybody talking about all the books and i'm like oh shoot i really want that book and look it's right there and it's 20 percent off or oh look <laughs> available i should get that one <laughs> so terrible. I know, do you do that thing where you're just like walking you're like oh i know that book i know that book i know that book and you're, you're just walking around looking yes. at all the books you've seen on booktube or bookstagram and you're like i could buy that one uh -huh. <sighs> so bad. It's, a tr it's trouble it's really <laughs> it's a lot of trouble it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game it's dangerous just gotta stay away from those bookstores because otherwise we get in trouble I think I was, oh no, yeah, I was watching your Sunday sum up when you went and got Dracula and immediately, like, I was just like, I should go to the bookstore. And I was like, Jenny, no! <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Uh, it's, I, I, it is, it's a, it's a problem. It's a problem. They're, and they're just so fun. You know, they're just such a wonderful, welcoming, welcoming environment, aren't they? It's a they good really place are. to go be with good friends, all the books. <laughs> Say, I'm I'm just, yeah I came in like I just bought we had a speaker at work for pride and I just went online and bought their book and in doing so I was like oh here's two other nonfiction books that I want like I bought them from this bookstore that I visited in Cincinnati and I was just like I don't need all of these <laughs> so I kept so I keep reminding myself you just bought three books that aren't <laughs> even here yet just because you can't see them doesn't mean they don't count. Oh, that doesn't count. I don't think it counts. <laughs> oh, I'm a mess. It's, it's, oh. it's, it does count, huh? <laughs> I mean, if you forget about them and they show up automatically, you know, they show up all of a sudden, then that doesn't count. I don't think that counts. So just as that's, long as you work really hard to forget them. That's like the, the Barnes & Noble did that pre-order thing where like it was like 25% off of pre-orders mm -hmm. or something at the beginning of the year. And I pre-ordered like six books and then they just randomly show up and I'm like, Crap. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> that was me. I just got yeah. that. It's over there. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to go get it. The, it's called a little bit country maybe by Brian Kennedy. It's apparently a book about, uh, it's a male, male romance set at what is definitely Dollywood. And for somebody who is like, like, an hour and a half, two hours from Dollywood, I'm like, yes, give it to me. <laughs> this is Dolly Parton's country. <laughs> Have you been to Dollywood? Yeah. And? I mean, it's been years, so I can't really speak to it now. It's changed so much, but it, I mean, Sevierville, uh, Gatlinburg, that area, we call mm -hmm. it Redneck Vegas because it's like... <laughs> You see all kinds up there. <laughs> <laughs> the 
that's amazing. where everybody goes on spring break. Like all the teenagers, it's like they either go oh. to Florida to like Panama City or they go to Gatlinburg. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's, that's okay. How fun. I, I got to go there at some point just to, just to see, just to see. <laughs> Told you I'm chaos. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. That's fantastic. I love it. Let's see, I didn't realize you read the first. Yeah, I read it during my Christmas Carol Advent calendar thingy. So yeah, that was really good. Uh, Polar Bear Sports Club was, was it was fun. It was really cute. There's a big old series now of it, and I think I probably heard of that one probably on Gavin Channel, where I go for my my middle grade <laughs> these days. Oh, there's a lot of good, but there's a lot of good middle grade uh, booktubers out there. It's just. Yeah. yeah, I think about him and Jade are the two people that I think I hear the most middle grade from. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a few teacher booktuber friends like Amy and some others that read a lot of middle grades. So I get some recommendations from them. But definitely Jade and, and Gavin, especially because they do monthly book club where they're doing. Yeah, so there's yeah. always and they're always well, especially Gavin works for waterstones in the children's department right so I think he so. always knows about the most the latest the biggest the brightest the brand new yeah. middle grades which is fun yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. good good times are you ready to spin again <laughs> <laughs> let's see if it if 60 nice again <laughs> oh and it is it's 55. Oh <laughs> <laughs> is really, I need to spin. I, I think uh, the thing is weighted. I think it's weighted. And this thing chose violet. <laughs> yeah, because I just spun it again and it did 50. I, um, maybe, maybe you should let me do this. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's fantastic. It's not up to me. It's up to the spinner. <laughs> oh, well, all right. What's what's fifty five? Let's see. Um, we could do. Um, we could start in three minutes and just make it. What would that be? Forty five. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Because it'd be 60 minus 5. There we go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My math when I'm when I'm hosting sprints is always terrible. <laughs> My husband is a human calculator, so I usually just let him. Really? Yeah, he he's he's numbers are he can do complex calculations in his head, and I'm just like, I I'm good at math, but not that good. <laughs> Does he have a mathematics like degree or something like that? Or no? Nope. <laughs> Someone who who is really good at math in their head. Yeah. Oh wow, that's does he does he have to use math at all for work? Somewhat, yeah. Okay. It's not yeah. like the main thing, but he definitely does it. He 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 gets he, he has to deal with the finance department a lot, and he usually proves them wrong. <laughs> I'm well, like, why are you doing thing. their job? <laughs> That makes them happy, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, knowing the way fun. he delivers things, probably not. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's him. probably like, "Why didn't you get this right? See, look, look, I figured it out in no time. Just you know, off the top of my head." <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, my nephew is the same, and he is so. He's such a little jerk about it. <laughs> he really is. He's like, I know everything. I'm a know-it-all. I'm the smartest person on the planet, just so you guys know. <laughs> he is. He's wonderful. He's he's a wonderful child, but he is a pain in the butt when it comes to that. He just thinks he's, you know, yeah, That's you know. <laughs> well, you must know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, is you? Uh, do you think your baby is gonna be uh, personality-wise? How do you think your baby is like? He was saying full sentences before he was even two years old, so he's like incredible. Uh, he's very much like my husband, like way advanced. It's it it freaks me out a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, you're but... too smart. 
<laughs> Wait till they get older. They just get smart and they know they're smart. That's the problem is the knowing it. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> We've got a Brittany. Hey, Brittany, welcome. My husband is the same too. It's crazy when people do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nathaniel, he's so that is an awesome superpower to have. I'm super jealous of yeah. Jenny's husband. Yeah, it's really cool and it's very to be his sidekick. What let's be his sidekick because then I don't have to think about it. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's good to have someone who can, who can just figure all that out for you. All right, are we ready for our next sprint? Yep. The wheel All right. chaos. <laughs> it's the wheel. It's it's not us. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Happy sprinting, everyone.
Hello, welcome back. <clears throat> how'd it go? How'd it go? I'm getting. Did you ever read that story in school called Most Dangerous Games? No. It was like a guy who like invited a bunch of people to his island and then hunted them. <laughs> oh gosh! Like, why is that a thing? I read that we read in high school English. But I'm getting that kind of vibe right now. Like, that's not what's happening or it hasn't happened. But, like, that's the vibe that I, like, my my brain is like, is that what's happening? So, oh, that's kind of exciting in a bad way. <laughs> not in a good way. I'm I mean, maybe in a good way it. for the, enjoying the book, but not in a good way for yeah. reality. <laughs> I think one of my earbuds died. Uh-oh. Are you enjoying talking. the book so far? Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I like it. Yeah. How's your reading going? Good. I made I made some progress. I'm getting close to the end. Yeah. Oh, it goes backwards. Yep. I was like, but the bookmark's going the wrong way. <laughs> Can you tell I don't read manga? Yeah, there we go. Now it looks like it's the right way. <laughs> <laughs> it it does take a little bit of getting used to for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's like I've, I've actually you know gone backwards and doing worse at reading. Isn't it? it's getting worse and worse that's going really well it's the funny thing about these is because this is like a a, a bind up of it's a collect this is the collector's edition so it's a bind up of a whole bunch of the volumes so this is volume four of the collector's editions but it's a bind up of all the different individual visions uh, and so like you get these weird and this is true for uh, some other mangas i've read before too you get this weird jump in perspective where you're re it's, it's almost like you know, you're reading something and all of a sudden the story changes completely and you're mm -hmm. in a com completely different characters. And I think that's because that's where it changes from one volume to the next. Like it's a whole brand new book, but it's really odd when you're reading a book full of, and there's no, you know, to me, it doesn't look like it's, it's, it's a whole new book, but oh, it kind yeah. of that way sometimes. So there's not so, like title pages between the next one volume to the next? There are, but it doesn't say like, it's, it, there's chapters, so they keep oh. it in chapters. They don't actually, like, this is volume, you know, this is the next volume, you know, so it's, it's not, it's not divided that way. So it, I've gotten used to it because this is my fourth of these collector's edition bind ups, but um, it took me a while to get used to how that works. In the first couple, I was like, what? I don't, the story just jumped. I don't understand what, what's going on. They always come back to it later on, but it's really odd. Oh, okay. And I think that's because it's, you know, a bind up of multiple. And so it it's good and it's fun, but we're just jumping around here and there, learning different oh, parts of the story. Let's see. Hey, Betty, glad you could make it. This is killing me. That's not good. I've been on vacations. I've enjoyed reading a ton, but reality is coming back and I put down my books to work on my thesis. Friends are helping. They book is good. And I hope your thesis goes quickly and well and it turns out beautifully and that then you can start reading again. Because <laughs> that's no fun. Uh, forgot that my book club had our Zoom chat today, so I left to do that and came back in the same sprint. Oh, it was the book, Ruby. <laughs> it was a long sprint. I know, it? I'm like, that, that says all it needs to say about <laughs> I I love it. I, I think it. it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just like <laughs> what kind of trouble can I cause these? I think it's fantastic. It went well. I read twenty five pages in between taking care of my kids. That's awesome. That's fantastic. That's good. Oh, slacking hundred and five that time. G shell. Keep it up. Keep it up. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous game was awesome. I taught that. The main character fell off of a boat and seeks refuge with the man not showing, not knowing he hunts people. Best story for ninth graders. Really? Yeah. yeah, we read it. I think it was ninth grade when I read it too. That is a, it's a wild story. That's one of those things that's like burned into my brain. And I feel like anybody who, ha who did study that in school is like, why did we study this? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of like, um, did you study uh, the lottery or read the I lottery? Don't think so. mm -mm. That was probably our version of, and that's basically where the story was that 
can't remember exactly how the story went, but like, it's kind of like, um, what is that movie that came out where once a, a month or once a year, everybody can kill each other? What was that movie that came out? So like, it's kind of like you're clearing out the, the crowd by, you know, allowing oh, people wow. to hunt down and kill each other. So it's kind of the same thing where they all get, I think they do it, oh, the lot, that's what it is. They, they have a lottery and the person who wins the lottery is the person that all the rest of the people in the town kill. So they actually all get rocks and they start killing that one person off. But I don't know how often the lottery, it's been a long time since I read the story, but it, it was, it's a story where you're, if you win the lottery, that's, you're the person, you're the tribute, you're the sacrifice and you get killed. It's not a good thing to win the lottery. <laughs> it's like, why do they teach us these things? Why is the most dangerous game and the lottery things they teach you in high school? That's wild. I, I literally, I just, that it's one of those, and I just made an impact obviously because it's been a long time since I read that. And it's still like, as I'm reading this, I'm like, most dangerous games <laughs> <laughs> seems like it uh it's still sticking huh okay interesting oh so that'll be fun to hear if it turns out like that yeah that's that's exciting Did amy finish a chapter then fell asleep yeah i think my mom's asleep too <laughs> it's, it's afternoon uh, nap time <laughs> Di diana read 32 pages almost done with this book all right that's awesome so close maybe in our next 50 minute sprint <laughs> you'll be able to finish that book diana <laughs> let's see hey john how's it going i hope you're doing well Back another 30 pages fantastic oh i lost my space let's see hello late hey jean getting on my book clubs reading romance instead reading if it's only love by lexi ryan that's wonderful I'm glad you uh, are cheating on your your book club. It's Miss Dalloway, not a good turnout. I didn't read it, so it wasn't a long discussion. I know that you read that recently, and you didn't go for it. Oh. Oh, you're on mute. No, can't hear you. You're on mute. Now can you hear me? Okay, my so, earbuds just literally died, so I had to put on my work headset. You read Mrs. Dowley recently, and you didn't care for it, right? I DNF'd that. Right, right. I remember you not enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, it's just really slow, and I was trying to do audiobook, which is not the way to read that book, because it's very, like, stream of consciousness, like, yeah, so. Yeah, I tried Don't to read it in high school. Huh? I said, don't blame you, Ruby. <laughs> I tried to read it in high school and I didn't like it then. And then I read it recently and I actually really enjoyed it this time around. But I read it physically and I think I'm enjoying stream of consciousness more than I did in the past. So it was one of those things where I think that I just I was able to give it the time that I wanted to for it. And so I enjoyed it. But yeah, it's not for everybody. That's for darn sure. Yeah, I feel like I could really like it in the at the right time, and it, it just wasn't now. <laughs> There's definitely books like that, books where I read it and I'm like, this is not something I'm enjoying, and then I end up going back and reading it some other time. And it, our, you know, what we, how we're feeling in life, or things we're going through, or what our mindset is, can really change mm -hmm. the. And that's why, like, I feel like rating books feels so ridiculous sometimes because as much as it's helpful when you're trying to get recommendations and things like that, it, I also know that there's times when I feel completely different about books. Yeah. Which, so, I don't know, it's kind of rough. <laughs> I'm always like, I don't like that. I know that there's some people who don't rate books anymore. And I, Yeah. I was gonna say, I think uh, Doris from Aldi Books, she doesn't really rate her books. She's like, I go in thinking everything's going to be a three star and then I'm like, it's good or it's bad. That's it. Yeah. I, I haven't got to that point where I'm really able to give that up yet, but yeah. I know, but it does irritate me just knowing myself and knowing that there's sometimes when I really like, if I was in a different mindset, my rating would be different. And so it's, I don't know. It is kind of weird. 
Kim had her dinner and made more fools qu and read more of Fool's Quest. Tw Twelve Fool's pages Quest is, is a good one. Is that the last one or not the last uh, last? One? I can't see them. <laughs> I have them all lined up over there, so I was trying to see where in it. I maybe th yeah, I think that is in the last trilogy. That okay. whole art gets wild, so you're in for a ride. Oh, so excited. I'm so excited. Just got back from dinner with the fam, read 30, 30 pages in Loveless. That's that's supposed to be an amazing one. The Purge, yes, Purge. That's the movie I'm thinking of. Mm. Spoiler alert. Yeah, sorry. I spoiled um, the lottery. <laughs> I mean, but isn't that it's 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 been around for a while. That's like saying that that somebody spoiled um, like Romeo and Juliet. I feel like. Yeah. I mean, hasn't everybody read it in high school? <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. It takes place early year in June. Lottery in June. Knee high by Jill. Oh, I don't know what that is. July. Oh, July. I don't know what that is either. I love Lottery too. Great conversations. The reason that people do that is to have peace for the rest of them. The question was, is our suffering worth one person's suffering? The kids pay attention. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know there's reasons for it. It's just, they seem kind of. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, well, I do remember there being a lot of dialogue because people were real freaked out by, at least by most dangerous games, people were really freaked out by it. <laughs> Although I have, like, I was talking to somebody else who's a teacher about this, and they were saying that we were talking about how a lot of middle schoolers absolutely love those life or death situation books, or that's when people really get into dystopian, you know, in their their middle, middle, you know, teen, early teenage years. Sorry. Have we, have we circled back to Animorphs now? Because <laughs> that's basically <laughs> the theme there, is it's like life or death. Like, these kids are going to die. That's what you're just waiting for it. So I I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Diana thinks it's funny. <laughs> she wrote it to point out the pointlessness of following tradition for the sake. Yes. No, that's I see that, especially with the lottery. Yeah, because of it seems insane and you're kind of like what are why would you do something like this but the people just continue to do it because that is their tradition yeah Oops, what do they do <laughs> <laughs> i mean getting hot that, takes here <laughs> that is fair to say it is a fair <laughs> oh sorry kim i spoiled it i just forget you heard that <laughs> <laughs> yes, I read that with my eighth graders, and we divide into family groups and make paper stones. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh <no. laughs> that is brutal! Yeah, it is really short. Yeah, definitely check it out, Kim. It's pretty fun, actually. We had to create our own stories. So when I was in high school, we read the lottery and we recreated our own. And I changed mine into vampires, of course. <laughs> so they used the rocks to sharpen their teeth to get ready to kill the other, the last person. How funny! <laughs> I was such a weirdo in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked um, Mrs. Dalloway too, Kim. But I I can agree that it's not going to be for everyone, and it does feel very pretentious at times <laughs> and insufferable. <laughs> Uh, I read the lottery in high school, but then again, I'm ancient. Me too, Jean. Oh, okay. I, I feel ancient on booktube so often, like on a daily basis. Somebody made so, somebody on maybe it's on Bookstagram. Somebody made the comment that one of her students said she looked like she was nearly forty, and I was like, <laughs> it's not too far away. <laughs> yeah, it's not far for me at all. So it's <laughs> like rude. I know. I know. It's, but it's, it's funny because um, I've had a couple of my friends, because I'm going back to school to get my teaching credentials, and I've had a couple of my young friends that I'm going to school with ask me, like, well, are you on book talk? Are you going to start a book talk? And I'm like, no, I'm too old. <laughs> I don't want to get called out no. on book talk. <laughs> I am definitely too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I, you know, YouTube is pretty much all where all my energy goes. Like, even Instagram, I, 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 I try, but I'm not great at keeping up with that so yeah I I sort of bounce between the two it's like what which one I put most energy into 
but one or the other, right? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. That's pretty well, consistent. You've, you've got a baby, so that's a lot of, you know, that's exhausting already right there. Yeah, you get done with a full day of work and you come home and there's someone in your house. <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap, I have to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how's your garden going, too? Because you're also doing that. Oh, uh, it's going okay. We don't have anything growing yet because um, we waited so long to actually finish digging the garden. And by we, I mostly mean me. Um, that instead of, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of the plants going in, in like April, they went in almost in June or closer to June. And so like... Yeah. it's what it is we'll do better next year <laughs> you're just getting it going right so that's yeah let's see knee high in july refer oh knee high in july it refers to the crops it's a line of the story okay i it's been a long time since i read that Amy. Oh, okay. <laughs> where's jean's comment ancient yes it's been a long time <laughs> since i read it so i don't remember <laughs> see did you make your mug jenny Oh, no, not this one. This is, uh, there's a girl on Instagram out of Los Angeles. Um, and this is one of hers. Oh, that's awesome. Beautiful. Let's see. Most dangerous game lived rent free in my head for a while. <laughs> Look, it's it. still living rent free in my hair head more than 30 years later. <laughs> I mean, not 30. That would be a long time, like 20 years later. Mm -mm. Well, this book is bringing up, bringing up, a, bringing it back into your head. Yeah. They love it. In high school. Yeah, I read it in high school. I'm probably behind now. Uh, 40 is in the rear view. That's all right, Jean. It'll be yeah. in the rear view for me in two years, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not far behind you four years and then <laughs> be in the rear view, so. It's shocking how quickly it, it it comes up, you know, like, well, and just it's, as you get older, it's shocking how quickly time goes. Cause I was thinking like my first 30 years felt so long. And now mm -hmm. I'm like thinking my next 30 years is probably going to go by so quickly. And it's, I want that same feeling as the first 30 years. <laughs> right. I just, I want it to feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> Went to a baptism today and the grandmother of the baby made a comment of all the older people sitting on this side which is side with us. <laughs> I was like I know I'm old I'm an old I'm the old friend but geez yeah rude right <laughs> crops ready soon okay yeah I I turned 40 on June 4th 4th oh happy happy 40th Betty congratulations yeah I was incredibly offended that the dating app that I'm on was on point in updating my <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> you gotta lie to that thing, Betty. You gotta lie to it. <laughs> I feel old too. Just ticked over midnight here, so I'm now 38. Ah! Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kim. Can't believe it. your birthday is your present is, is not in the mail yet. <laughs> it's sitting back there on the table. That's been my last two years. Like any gifts or anything I want to send people has been really like as I'm just terrible. My be my best friend just came in for the first time in three years, and she was just like unloading random gifts from random times. And I was like, "I you want some pottery?" <laughs> I was like, "I have nothing. I'm the worst." At uh... <laughs> I've gotten worse at it too. You know, I definitely it, have. Yeah. Let's see. My husband's birthday was June 4th also. Happy birthday to your husband, Brittany. You said you were weird in high school and I meant, uh, so now you're not anymore. Oh, that's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm totally weird. You know that, Amy. <laughs> Happy 40th, Betty. Happy birthday, Betty. Hey, late birthday, Betty. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kim. Happy birthday. I'm horrible at giving gifts to people. Yeah, me too. That's not my love language. Mine either. Yeah. Mine is time. I think that time is my, or when people give me their time, like when giving time, doing things with people, experiences, spending time with people, that to me is, is much Same. more meaningful. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I'd rather like go somewhere with somebody or, or do something they need done. Yeah, I think so too. I was thinking about like what you were saying with your dad when you guys started, when you were going to do the pottery thing. I've always preferred like giving gifts like that. Like, let's go do this thing. Or I think this year I took mom to the, the movies for her birthday, you know, and it was not huge, but it was just something fun for the two of us. So yeah. Yay, birthday girl. <laughs> That's exciting. I want to read a book on love languages or articles. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think that's interesting. I think it definitely is not just one or the other, I don't think. I think you can span more than one thing. Mm -hmm. But I read a book on it at one point because <laughs> it got given to us, I think, as a wedding gift or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like everybody has, it's like a ranking of the order that they go in or whatever. It was interesting. Yeah. Did you find, did you learn anything about yourself that you didn't, didn't think or like did, did make anything clear that you hadn't realized before? My husband laughed because he was like, yep, ours are basically the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, could have told you that. And I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> totally opposite in that, in that respect. <laughs> yeah, that makes it difficult, doesn't it? Because what the other person from, you know, wants is not something that automatically comes to mind to you. So you have to like consciously think about what that yeah. other person's going to, what's going to make that other person feel that same level of love. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Sure I think that's the one I read was the five love languages. I give my nephews a trip to the movie with me and a book every year for their birthdays. That's nice. That's fun. Yeah. That is a fun one. Those good gifts, you know, like, I mean, and I like gifts are fun too, but it is really nice to just spend time. And I'm a one-on-one -on -one kind of person. I mean, I like groups and I can do things with groups, but I'm a lot more, I like that time spent with that one person the most. Yeah. Yeah. It's just because then you feel like you really get to give them yourself and they get, they can share with you. And yeah, that, that that's what works for me, I should say. Yeah. Same. <laughs> I agree with Brittany. The five love languages was a fascinating read. I guess I gotta pick that one up and, and see what I can learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'll write it down. Oh you have your book you have your book in the thing. How do I where's <laughs> Oh, so you go to your picture and there's a little three dots. If you click on the little three dots next to your little picture. Oh yeah, um, there we go. <laughs> then edit it. name. Yeah. Becca's got to put the children to bed. Maybe I'll check in after you if you're still here. All right, Becca. Hope the babies get down quickly. I get to tell my husband he gets to put the baby to bed, which means I probably am going to have to relocate. <laughs> is this? Are you in the baby's room? No, but my office is directly next to the baby's room, so I will relocate to the master bedroom where I'm slightly further away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's see. Are you ready to choose choose death again? To, to choose chaos again? Yeah, that. <laughs> That's what I meant. Let, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what this this lovely wheel of chaos has for us this time. Okay. Let's see if I can spin it harder. <laughs> Is that going to be better or worse? What is it? 45? 40. 45. That's 45. Okay, so we're going... That's reasonable. We're going, that's reasonable. At least we're Part going down instead of back up. The highest is only 60, so it doesn't go above that. I was, I was thinking, like, now, we should get a closer look at this thing. Is there only 45, 50, 55, 60 repeated over and over again? So it goes down to... It goes to 20. Um... And uh, it goes from 20 all the way up to 60 in five minute inter intervals. But then there's a, there are two twenties, two thirties and two forty fives. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Just chaos. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, and he gonna... says it's uh, five love languages and hoopla. If anybody wants to listen to it. Okay. So we've got, what is that then? 
uh, stop at 50? Is that 50? 45 would 55. be 55, yeah. Okay, uh, Diana's happy with the 45 minutes. See, 45 was perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. 55. Okay, and let's get started. Happy sprinting, everyone. And I will return in the other room. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back. Hello. Oh, I'm in 10 minutes early. Oh. <laughs> I'm just bringing the chaos to the stream. <laughs> I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, that was a brief intermission, but I guess we can finish up the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs>
Okay, did I get it right this time? <laughs> <laughs> I think my brain was thinking 45 minutes, and so then I just thought 45. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> funny. <laughs> How'd it go? How'd your reading go? Uh, I got less reading done because I had to help put the the little one to bed. He he was not having this mommy is busy thing. He was like <laughs> knocking on the door. If my, my husband was like, she's busy. <laughs> He's like, no, she's not. Now it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> <sighs> oh, goodness. Well, is he off? Is he asleep now? Did he? He's in his bed. He doesn't. He. T- he, he, he could be asleep, but <laughs> he'll eventually he pretty fall good asleep. At, is he pretty good about like you know like just laying there for a while until he does fall asleep? Yeah, once he once he gets calmed down, he's usually fine. So, yep. How'd your reading yeah. go? Good. I'm getting Ooh, closer almost. to the end. <laughs> Turning it around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm getting close. And um, yeah, it's going really well. It's just easy readings, which is nice. It feels it's yeah. a good way to kind of end out the weekend. I think I'm almost, I'm at the halfway point, so yeah, that's I feel like at this reading. point, yeah, I feel like at this point, I'm obligated to say no more. Ah, uh, ah, <laughs> uh, yes, unlike me in the lottery. <laughs> I do feel like this is, it's like one of those things where it's like, if you want to read the river, you should read the river before you read this. But if you don't want to read the river, then like, it's not important to this story, but you know, it, this just spoils the crap out of it. Okay. So (laughs) if if you do want to read the river, don't read that one first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We had Alicia back. I hope you had, hope your dinner was good. And Deanna, you're here. You made it. You made it at the beginning of that sprint, I think. So it's awesome. Hey, Paige. Morning. Let's see. Is that a dinosaur or a cat tail behind you, Jenny? <laughs> oh, are you talking about this? Yeah, That's, I it, think so. It's a, oh, that way. It's like a oh. an antique wash stand that I use as a nightstand. It does oh, look like cool. a dinosaur or a cat tail, though. <laughs> like a brontosaurus or a... I can one. see that. Yeah, and that's cute. <laughs> Shelly's losing steam. Losing steam. 92 that time. What is this? <laughs> Diana finished. Congratulations. Awesome. I forgot what you were reading, Diana. What did you finish? Ruby read 30 pages of cake. Ooh. Hi, K. And I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Um, but Me that one's really popular right now. Have you read it? No, but I really, really want to. Good. When you said you were still at 10 minutes, I was relieved you didn't need to stop. Okay. That's a good, that's, yeah, that makes yeah. me want to read it more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's pretty new, right? It just come out recently, I think. Yeah. Not a lot of people are reading it. There were pages in Loveless plus baby Mabel Cuddles. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, that's an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving giving her a hard time because I can. Yeah. So, um, how are things going with the Women's Prize for Fiction? How has it? Are you still reading any of the other books on that? So you've you finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they announce on Wednesday will be the when the winners announced, um, and I read in full five of them and DNF'd the sixth one because, I mean, uh, Stephanie from Time to Read is, is mad at me because um, she loves Ruth Ozeki and I had told her when it got added to the short list, I was like, I know I'm not going to like that book. I, mm-hmm. I know I'm not going to. And then I started and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> have you so, read other Ruth Ozeki? I have, and I liked it. A Tale for the Time Being, I liked. Um, just the premise of the book did not sound interesting to me. Okay. And then when, like, everything around him was talking to him, and one of them was, like, moralizing about about things, I was like, no, no. <laughs> 
So I don't really, yeah, I don't really have a good pulse on what I think is going to win this year. Just because I don't know, I was underwhelmed, honestly, with the whole list. Uh, the well, list? With, with the short list. Okay. Because this one Sky Day, or I think it's called Puppy Show in the U.S. Uh, by Leonie Ross, was my favorite, and it make the short list. Mm-hmm. It's wild. That is a wild book. Puppy Day. Uh, Puppy Show or Puppy, puppy show? show? Yeah. How do you spell that? Uh, <laughs> you're better off just looking up this one Sky Day, <laughs> and then it'll show you. It'll it'll say puppy show because it okay yeah that's the name of it in the uk i don't know why they do that this one oh leon leon ross yeah leone ross or something like that yeah it it's good it's wild though it's one of those books that's like i feel like i need to read it again because i there's just so much going on yeah all right i gotta put it on my list i gotta check it out it's like fantasy magical realism a little bit, but but still with like, it's very much literary fiction. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was my jam. I liked it. It sounds good. I love, I do really like magical realism. And I don't read a lot of literary fiction recently, but I do like literary fiction a lot. So that's a me, that's, that's me falling down on what I enjoy. <laughs> Let's see. Is... Okay. Got on my list. So yeah, I was just, I, I like, I haven't, I like, I like following everybody that does all the uh, woman prize, women's prize, uh, you know, that are reading them and are like, especially like Savage Reads and stuff. I've, I've heard you mention him and I was like, I really love following these booktubers that, that read all these wonderful books and I, I really want to get to them at some point, but I just, I just don't, I'm not very good about, um, there's just so many books that I want to read and end up reading. And I've been terrible at trying to get to specific books at specific times for, you know, yeah. so getting to these prize, you know, these getting to these books before the actual awards happen just never, never works out for me. I did not think it was going to happen for me this year because I was like, I'm just going to read the ones I'm interested in. And then a couple of them, it was like the audiobook came up at the library. And I was like, sure, like Sorrow and Bliss, which I was not really interested in. But then I was like, well, the, uh, the audiobook's up. I might as well listen to it. And it, I liked it. It wasn't my favorite, but it was mm. fine. Um, but yeah, I when I was reading, picking ones for the long list, I was like, I'm not going to be anywhere close. And then when it got announced, I had already read four of them. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I guess I could go ahead and read the rest of the short list. <laughs> yeah. So there was only one that you DNF'd. Was yeah. That? Yeah, there was a Zeki. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was, it was a mediocre list. <laughs> you have just... a, clear, a clear winner in your mind? Um, My favorite is The Bread the Devil Need. Mm-hmm. But I do not think it will win. Hmm. If I had to guess, I would say either Sorrow and Bliss or um, what's the what's the one about the fig tree? Oh, the Elif Shafak book. That one looks really good, actually. Island of Missing Trees. That's what it is. That's right. That one looks really good. Did you like that? I liked it. Um. I the way the story's told is done in a certain way like purposefully and and I've said this uh, I think a couple of times is like I 100% understand what she was doing it did not work for me. Oh okay. <laughs> but it works for everybody else. I seem to be the minority there and I was like it's it's a solid book the story's beautiful. It just yeah, it's told in a certain way that is intentional and it it I can tell it worked for everybody else. <laughs> I think that one's a very, very possibly the winner. Okay. Like that's my oh, really? gut. Yeah. Okay. Which it would deserve um, it. <laughs> yeah. Becca's asking, did that one make, that one definitely made the short list, right? The bread, the devil need. I've, I've heard a lot of really positive things about that and people are talking about it though. So maybe. Yeah. No? It, I would liken it to how the one-armed sister sweeps her house from last year's list Mm -hmm. in that it has a lot of uh, sensitive topics. So I think that it's one of those where it's like you either 
are like, wow, or you're just like, I couldn't get through that. Okay. So there are some moments. I don't think it's gratuitous, um, but yeah. Pretty rough as far as like the, when, like the details of the topics and things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just, I, I really do. I don't know. It sometimes it just depends on how it's written. If it's written well, then I can handle those tougher topics. Depends on what the topics are, though. There's certain topics that are a lot harder for me than others. Um, but when it feels a little gratuitous, then it it can be rough to try and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough. But very good. I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I asked Diana, Diana, what you read? Oh. Finley Donovan knocks him dead. Very funny series. Have you read any of that series yet? No, but I hear such good things about it. Have I know, you read me it? Too. No, it's not one that I would have thought I would be interested in, but it just keeps getting such great reviews that I'm like, hmm, maybe. Yeah. Jean got a chapter read and a dinner and dinner eight. Delicious. After had a discussion i read three but of course you did well good <laughs> i'm glad you're out of your slump page <laughs> <laughs> so maybe shadow of night was holding you back <laughs> uh Brittany read 22 pages this time i made it halfway into my hook is my book as well prometheus priestess which sounds like a fun a fun name when you were telling me about that one hope it's going well Amy loves Finley. Okay. I got to I got to make that one work at some point. It sounds like it's a fun read. Yeah, it does. Potato. <laughs> we got really silly on our live show discussion the other night. <laughs> so, uh, Paige's new thing is potato. <laughs> so, we've got a fun group of sillies. But we had yeah, it was a lot of fun. We did um we did a shadow of night discussion and we have a lot of you know strong opinions about that series by deborah harkness because she's very detailed and very history forward and like detail forward a lot like in my opinion she is the lesser uh tedious version of anne rice <laughs> oh okay. i don't think she's tedious at all i absolutely loved it but it's funny because i kind of liken her writing a little bit to anne rice's writing because of just the level of detail that goes into the books. Let's see. I was, say, uh, go I was gonna say speaking of, of details, how are you how are you enjoying the Robin Hobb realm of the el elderling so far? Like so good. So good. It's so good. Yeah. I I Life Ships the Life Ships Trader series has been my favorite compared to um the Farsha Trilogy, although I really liked the Farsha Trilogy a lot. Royal, Royal Assassin was my favorite of that series. But I'm appreciating the Farsha Trilogy more now because of the Live Ship Traders. Like, it makes me want to go back and read that first. Yeah. And these books are long enough that I don't really need to go back and read it. Yet. No, I actually listen to all of them on audio. So <laughs> um, I would like to at some point go back and read the physical books. Um but yeah, it's just, the way that she interweaves the different series are so interesting. I liked yeah. I liked Live Ship Traders better than I guess the first one's called The Fits and the Fool. I, Farseer, I like, yeah. Oh, it is yeah. is Farseer. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and then I liked unpopular opinion. I liked the Dragon Keeper, what? like the the yeah. Reynold Chronicles. Yeah better than i mean not better than but a lot like i really really liked that that quartet so i just think it's fun yeah when you get I there mean, i've heard other people say they like that quartet more than the, the general consensus on faith on on sorry on booktube is that people are like i don't like it at all it's just formatted so poorly but i i have heard people like you say that they really enjoyed that series oh it's just it was just fun i, th I thought it was fun <laughs> there's also i read a um a short story so there's a a short story collection um of robin hobbs that's like her two pen names mm -hmm, with megan and, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there is a story in that that is set in the Rain Wilds that I don't think a lot of people read because, like, um, Sam from Sam's Nonsense is the one who first, you know, got me into the Robin Hobbs books. Mm-hmm. And I asked her if she had read it, and she's read all of them like twice, and she'd never even heard of it. And I was like, it adds so much to the story that it's like this obscure thing that I just stumbled upon because I had that book. It's so good. So eventually. Uh- I've read a couple of the others and I don't think I've read that one yet, but I think um, one of the people I'm reading it with said, don't read it quite yet. There's like a certain order to read it in. So I'm kind of waiting. I'm waiting to see at what point I should be reading that. So I'm trying to keep track of that, of all the small mini stories, not mini stories, the shorter novellas or short stories that are part of it. And one of them absolutely loved. What one was that? Um, Words Like Coins. That's the one Mm. I read so far that I, I loved that one. And that's a good one. Yeah, they're 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 fun because they do add in a lot of little information and more about the magic system mm-hmm. that you don't quite get as much from the books. Yeah, yeah, like that. that one adds the the one that you don't want to read now. It adds a lot of layers to like the the live ship trader universe. Cool. Yeah. In a way that it was like, it was a story that after reading those, I thought, man, I wish I, I wish I could have that story. And, and there it was. And I was like, it exists. So. Oh, cool. Okay. That's good to know. Good. I'm excited about that. Um, We got very little done during that sprint because my reading buddies keep needing to go outside. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hey, Leanna. Going to watch the replay. I'm glad you're dropping in to say hi, though. Um, but never by themselves or at the same time. They're dogs. Yeah. Understand. Yeah, totally understand. <laughs> Can we get a bingo board update? Mine has not changed. <laughs> <laughs> I still have zero bingos somehow. <laughs> I still have two. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't. Maybe I didn't say that. That was in my... I didn't point that out in my Sunday sum up because I forgot. I've been doing vlogging my 48 hour readathon and then I'm I'm mixing up my vlog. <laughs> like, what did I put in this one? What did I forget to put in that one? So I'm having a hard time keeping them both the same. <laughs> oh no. That's like. Really? A... Okay. Hey, go ahead. There you go. Oh, I was just going to say, I just don't know, like, like Kayla from Books and Lala, Lala, I don't know how she keeps anything straight, because it, because it, it's clear that she's filming multiple vlogs at the same time, and I'm like, I feel one, and I cannot keep my footage in order. <laughs> she must have copious notes, like, and then the way she organizes her files and stuff like that, when she it comes has to, to be. It has to, because... Yeah, I do know another person who, Martine, also films a million vlogs at once at the same time. And I just, it seems overwhelming. So overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a couple that are that I haven't made enough progress on that I have to, like, make sure when I'm filming my reviews, specifically I'm filming them for that, like, vlog. But it it's, it's like, a year in the making, so. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh gosh, that's for that vlog. I got to remember to <laughs> save it. And, and that's yeah, it's amazing. Really <laughs> that's just one though. But that, you know, like Kayla and them, they have like four, five, six going at the same time. Yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah. I mean, she has to be super organized. I, I worked in, before my job now, I worked in television production. And I, like, the editors that I worked with were like that. Like, they had everything organized down to like, shot lists and all of this and I'm just like my brain is like "Mm, nope (laughs) I feel like if you ever notice like my first vlog when I'm vlogging for a month is like there's a lot of b-roll there's a lot of you know things and then it's like peters off after a while because I just forget that I'm vlogging entirely and so it's just like the same shot of me in bed being like I'm tired and yawning (laughs) I know. I was thinking about that. I was like, "Man, she is always yawning." She, I was like, "Oh, now I'm yawning. <laughs> now we're both yawning." I know. So, that makes sense now. It's always before you go to bed. 
oh my gosh every time I yawn now I'm like a couple of times I'll like cut it and then I'll be like okay let's just fill that over and then I'll yawn again and I'm like it's just not worth it <laughs> I swear I'm not always I tired. Cracks me up. I'm always like, wow, poor Jenny. She does she never gets any rest whatsoever. She's just yawning all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that's pretty common though, as far as like when when anybody does vlogs for longer than, you know, a day or two, that you end up, you know, at the beginning, it's like you're like, oh god, I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. And towards the end, you're like, oh, I forgot to, oh, I forgot to check in. Oh, forgot, you know. And not as much b-roll yeah that b-roll i always have to try and think about it because there's times when i'm like oh that would have been good b-roll and i completely forgot and, yeah i know i was like because like think think like the editors make shot lists and then i was like no nah. <laughs> like at the beginning of the month i was like okay hey, these are things that i could use and then i was like i forgot all. and then i get into editing and i'm like that would have been a great idea didn't do yeah. that i know didn't but, yeah it's <laughs> wasted opportunities those moments those life moments where we're actually enjoying ourselves and not thinking about what film footage we should get right right <laughs> like you no know, we should just enjoy that we enjoyed that moment but it's <laughs> gone. Oh, i totally God. agree i totally agree <laughs> fantastic <laughs> It's I'm so glad cool. everybody appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Very much so. It's it's. It, I have. I did think about that though. I was like, oh, poor Jenny. She's just so tired all the time. She's so busy. <laughs> and my friend, my friend calls it. Um, he calls it revenge bedtime, which is like when you don't get enough time in the day, and you know that you should go to bed at like a certain time. And then it's like 11 o'clock and you're like, I should have been asleep an hour and a half ago. That's me. <laughs> That's why I'm always yawning is because instead of going to bed at 930, I'm up until 11 and then I have to be up at 630 every morning. Well, there's always things that we find we can do, right? There's always things that can be done. Yeah, it's usually either I'm reading or watching YouTube videos that could probably wait till the next day. <laughs> Keeping on top of the YouTube videos, that is rough. <laughs> I know the little like it puts in parentheses like how many videos or whatever you, in your sub box that you haven't watched mm -hmm. in my like in the Chrome tab, and I've just gotten to the point where I ignore it because it's just a part of it. Because I'm like, I will yeah. never watch all the videos in my sub box. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. No. No. <laughs> I, I hear you. It's true. And I've gotten to a point where I have so many people I'm following that I'm like, why, why did I do that? <laughs> There's just no way. It's impossible. Yeah. I just added like six more people. And then I was like, why have I done this to myself? <laughs> it's already hard enough. But yeah, it's, it's still fun though. And then you find somebody new and you're like, oh, I really like their content. Let me follow a new person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it just, that happens. It's, and it, you know, we obviously don't have anything else we need to do in our life at all. <laughs> I'm also the world's worst commenter, though. Like, I watch a ton of videos a day. Because, like, I, I work from home, so I put them on in the background when I'm doing things. And I just, like, never comment. I will thumbs up everybody's video. I, like, every video I watch, I give you a thumbs up. But it, I'm almost never going to comment. <laughs> it's good. It's good not to get in that habit. Because I feel like I've gotten used to commenting for certain people. So if I... Since I'm used to commenting for them, I have to comment, and then I feel the pressure. So there's a lot of times where I'm like, oh, well, I haven't commented for these people, so I'll just watch all their videos, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it, which is terrible. It's like a terrible, that's really a terrible thing. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so I need to, I need to ease up on the commenting so that I can give myself a little less pressure. <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> Commenting's nice, though, and it's really nice to... And, you know, to get the comments and to chat with people. And it's a great way that I've created relationships with people on my channel. So it's really, it is nice. Yeah. I'm not saying anything in comments because I still do it a lot, but it can be hard. <laughs> I know. I wish I commented. Like, that's the part that I'm like, I think if I would comment on more, then I would like talk to more people. But just, it's laziness. <laughs> 
and it takes it does take a lot of work and then like the back and forth and the making sure you have something interesting to i mean i don't comment for a lot of the larger book the big big booktubers because they're not going to respond anyways and you know i'm not that clever so at a point there's just so many comments that i i I mean i imagine they all or they read them all but like i don't know how anybody can keep track of that yeah no overwhelming yeah yeah that just it makes me it makes me overwhelmed just thinking about it <laughs> like no 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 <laughs> yeah i'm happy where <laughs> i am <laughs> yeah all right so you ready for some more sprints are you feeling like another one how you feeling feeling good yeah i mean depending on how long this one is we probably we, we could see if this one's really long it might have to be the last one but <laughs> I don't know how you're feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling good either way. So okay. if this is a long one and it's the last one, that's fine by me. But if you want to do another one after this, and then that's fine too. All cool. right. Well, let's see what the what the wheel of chaos has. Let me try not to drop it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we're in the pinks. Oh, hold on. What does it say? 25. All right. Well, then there probably will be another one because that's real yeah, short. That's good, though. We're <laughs> mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right. Okay. So what's 25? 46? Yes. Aha! Look at that math. Look at that math. <laughs> We'll do 47 just to. All right. Okay. All right. Well, happy reading. Happy reading.
Welcome back. Hello. It's like things are getting serious over there, huh? Things just happened. <laughs> Holy crap. That's exciting. Yeah, we're getting to the thriller part. It's been, I'm not going to say it's been slow. It's been more psychological thriller mm -hmm. up until this point. And then something just happened that I'm like. <laughs> not just psychological, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's still a little, I just, it, things are moving, which I guess they should be. Because I'm like. Yeah. 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 Like I'm getting on in the book. Yeah. But yeah. Holy moly. That's exciting. <laughs> Definitely looked shocked. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny looks shook. Jenny looks I shook. am shook. It's just, I wish I could say the other comparison that's going through my head, but I can't because it's, we're to the point Spoiler. where I would just, spoiler. It. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be me. Don't be. <laughs> we're not going to lottery this one. Yeah. How'd everybody's reading go? Let's see, mine, I'm almost done. I've got one chapter left, Ooh, so. Close. Practically there. But let's see. Let's see what Brittany say. Frequently get interrupted from watching videos, and then I can't remember if I've commented or not. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. That happens. That happens. Thanks for the sprints. Need to go feed the children. <laughs> Good night, Brittany. 55 pages. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Oh, that was only 27 minutes or 25 minutes long, right? <laughs> that, was, that was a lot for 25 minutes. Poor Stella. I'm just giving her a hard time. Okay, let's see. Mary, I've switched to my... Oh, In My Dreams Holds a Knife, read 33 pages. How are you liking that so far? Pretty good? 9% uh, of Amari and then got Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. uh, Dairy Queen. <laughs> I haven't had that in a long time. My mom worked at Dairy Queen in high school, and when I was in college, we were going through a bunch of stuff in my grandparents' basement to help clean up, and I found her original Dairy Queen uniform, which was a one-piece yellow, like pale yellow one-piece with a Dairy Queen patch on it, and I was like, what? She's like, oh yeah, that's what we wore back in the 70s working at Dairy Queen and I was like this is amazing is it a dress? no it's like, like a romper oh that's amazing yeah like a shorts like shorts and short sleeve romper it, it's oh, it's so glorious I still have it because I was like this is <laughs> for Halloween <laughs> I couldn't fit in that thing my, my mother was like a stick was she? yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is that's incredible what a cool find it is so cool wow the 70s so far it's good i'm not sure if there's a big twist i kind of feel like there's supposed to be but i think i know who did it already but if i'm right i don't think the who is the mystery part okay so hmm, if, interesting yeah that happens sometimes does it bother you when you figure out the mystery um, before the end of the book. I'll just get excited. Oh, <laughs> oh, like if you figure it out. Yeah, then I get to the end and I'm like, I knew it! <laughs> my brain's always, I mean, I think everybody's like that. You're always trying to figure out, like, you're like, can I get there first? Yeah. I know it really, I know it really bugs some people when they read books. If they can figure it out, then, you know, they're not quite as excited about the book anymore. But I think it's, yeah, like Mary's saying, it's love figuring, figuring it out. Yeah. And then you feel smart, too. You're like, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes you feel very smart. She's doing the F care. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. <laughs> Jean read another chapter. Awesome job. What are you reading, Jean? I don't remember if you said you're reading a romance. That's right. Taking a break from those those book book club books. Reading something fun and lighthearted. That's always fun. <laughs> yeah, that's me reading my lighthearted manga. Although 
it's so dramatic. Oh my gosh. It's just so great. Like people don't live their life like this. <laughs> I, I hope not. People, it's just too much. It's too, it would be too much. Oh, that's fantastic. It's like, it's like reality TV drama, dramatic. Yeah. Well, it's more like, um, it's, it's, it's more like um, soap opera dramatic, I think, mm. but also with a magical twist, right? So soap opera, but with magic. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, and, it's, I, and I love the drama. It's just hilarious because, you know, well, actually what's funny is the main character of this, the, oh, um, let's see if we can find a picture of her. This is her right. Oops, that's her right there, Toru. Oh, okay. She she reminds me of my friend Elisa big time. So she's just like my friend, and so it's fun to read this because I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, she's not. And, and I don't mean like that in like the drama sense. I just mean the personality <clears throat> of this character reminds me of my friend Elisa, and it's just so fun to like read my friend in a book. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> it doesn't happen as much as I would think, you know, where you where I really notice that the personality of a character is a lot like someone I know or myself. That doesn't happen that often. I would expect that to happen a little more. Yeah. Because it depends on what kind of book you're reading. <laughs> I feel like with literary fiction, everybody's always depressed. So like, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to identify with these people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or mystery thrillers. You know, you don't... I definitely don't want to identify with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Crazy. crap just keeps happening to him <laughs> oh my goodness is it body horror is there body horror in that book quite a bit or no just... not at all the river had a little bit of it but not like because i don't really like body horror which is funny because you know that's just animorphs is body horror but like i said i skimmed those parts um yeah, I like. I think what I like about this one and the river is that they're more psychological thrillers, mm -hmm. uh, and then the nature setting. Like, I think if this was set not in nature, I wouldn't really enjoy it as much. But mm -hmm. I like it that it's set in the natural world. Well, and sometimes the author just has a way with words and is able to describe things in a way that, even if it's not what you normally would think you'd enjoy you end up enjoying it because of the writing style yeah i don't even remember why i read the river because i i probably pick up one thriller a year like that's how rarely i read thrillers and for some reason when i saw that book i was like i have to read this and then i read it and i was like this was fantastic and then i saw this one i was like i have to read that but don't remember why I I tend I'm, I'm like you I don't read a ton I definitely don't read a lot of thrillers um, mysteries thrillers I enjoy them when I do read them though so it's kind of like well why don't I read more of them because you know I do enjoy them but it just doesn't it doesn't happen as often I don't know I guess I'm not as drawn to them yeah I have not read the river so I have not yet read anything um, I would Peter Heller right. Yeah, but yeah. I'm tempted now. <laughs> I really love the nature uh, setting. I need to look up the other book that he's apparently really known for is called Dog Stars, but I have never even heard of that. So I should probably look that up. The River by Peter. The Rover. Not right. Oh, the Rover did come up though. <laughs> That's funny. It's got a gorgeous cover. I remember that. Maybe that's why I bought it. I don't know. <laughs> it is pretty. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, that's really pretty. It is. All right. Let's see. Well, and you know, I do like. It's it's got kind of that psychological element to it. Slightly more literary fiction. I like thrillers like that. So. Yeah, it's a I'm good one. I do feel like you definitely have to be into the nature part of it or it will not work for you. Like that's, that's a lot of people that read it and didn't love it. Their, their main complaint was that it talked too much about the nature aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Cause like the two guys are on like a, uh, 
like a canoe trip in like a really rural area. And um, so like he, th he really describes things and a lot of people were like, oh, it was overly descriptive with the nature. And I'm like, that was the best part. <laughs> so. Yeah, I like that. I think that would be good. That would definitely appeal to me. So I'm going to have to check it out. Mary goes through phases with mystery thrillers. Not usual genre, but when I read one, I read five, and then it's for a few months. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, I first read The River on Modern Mrs. Darcy. I don't think that's a channel I follow. I know. I don't follow. I, I don't think I know who that is either. Mm -mm. That sounds fun, oh. though. Modern Mrs. Darcy? So that's oh. Elizabeth Bennett today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to check her out. It's a cute name. I oh, know. Everybody's so clever with their with their names, and I'm just like over here with my actual name. <laughs> it's I mean, just my name. <laughs> mine's basically mine too. It's my first letter of my name and part of my last name. <laughs> <laughs> so you, not Anne Bogle. She's a blogger. Okay. Oh, okay. She also has a podcast called What Should I Read Next? Oh, that's fun. I like podcasts. Oh, okay. I don't read them as much as I I don't listen to podcasts as much as I used to because now I listen to audiobooks. So, yeah. There's a lot of good ones out there though. I used to really love podcasts and read listen to a read, listen to a lot of them. Yeah, I used to listen to it's funny the the main podcast that I listened to basically every single Monday was uh, Young House Love. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They're <laughs> like, they started as like a DIY renovation blog, but like there's so much more now. Um, but they've, they moved into a much smaller house, so they don't really have a room to make podcasts, so they don't make podcasts anymore. Mm -hmm. But it used to be the most fun, because it was just like a, like a married couple that were just as crazy and wacky as my husband and I are so it was just so relatable in that sense that it was like the things that she says and that he's just like I was like ah I've been there that's a moment I'm familiar with oh that's awesome that sounds yeah. fun. it's a really fun one yeah I was always a big radio lab fan so I listened to I watched listen to radio lab a lot and then both the main um first one of the main hosts retired and I was kind of bummed when he retired. And then the other one's just recently retired from that job. Like he's going on to different things. And oh. so it's kind of, I just haven't listened to it recently and, you know, kind of a bummer. Cause I mean, you know, they have good people that work for them that are took over, um, but it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of, you know, podcasts, YouTube, all, all of those kind of things, you get attached to the personalities more than necessarily the content sometimes. So yeah, it makes true. a big difference. It does. And that is usually what you're going for. You're going for the person as opposed to the, what they're saying, which is nice. I mean, they had a really good stories and the people who were coming up with all things were great, but it was more about listening to the commentary of those two guys that I was interested in on the stories that these other producers came up with as opposed to the actual producers themselves. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but it's interesting how that happens. And you know, not, you know, nothing lasts forever. So yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel about young house love is I'm like, well, that's sad, but you know, they got to move on with their lives. <laughs> How long were they doing it for? I actually don't know how long they did the po podcast because I, I mean, there's a bunch of them back episodes that I never even listened to because I came in like halfway through. Um, they were blogging. I mean, they still blog, but not nearly as much, but they're just funny. Sometimes yeah. she gets on Instagram stories and like does a lot of stuff. She, I have so many things in my home because she recommended them because she's yeah. so like, one of those people that's very genuine, the wife is, that when she likes something, then it's just like infectious. <laughs> She's a good Sorry. salesperson. She really is. <laughs> Probably without even intending to be, just knows. Yeah. Is able to convince other people that, that it is good. Yeah. She's not even trying to convince people. She's just like telling people about things. And then it's just like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> I feel like I'm always impressed by people who find these really like I I'm pretty lazy when it comes to 
buying cute things or knowing what to find in different places. You know, a lot of people follow these different Instagrammers that have these businesses that they find, they love certain products from them. And I see things that I'm like, that is so cool, but I wouldn't think to go out and search for that. And yeah. I mean, I guess that's where someone like, like, like she's, she's very helpful for, you know, giving suggestions because I won't go do the research myself. <laughs> Yeah, she. I mean, one of the examples are like these, we have these air filter things now, um, because I have horrible allergies. And um, she was talking about how they like improved her kids allergies. And so we ended up getting one because I was like, I'm not gonna because we were talking about getting an air filter anyways. And I was like, I'm not gonna do that research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she did. And so we got it. And it's been great. So you know, I didn't have to do the research. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's because yeah, I have no interest <laughs> just my uncle's th that way though he is the kind of person who will when he wants to buy something he'll do the research he'll look at all the different ones and he just loves the process of of looking and searching and i just like figure it out for me and then just tell me and i'll buy it because yeah i don't yeah my husband does that when he wants something he like goes he does all this research and i'm just like i cannot be bothered Mm -mm. I'm also that way with like travel. I do not want to have to book flights. I don't want to figure out hotels. Somebody just do it for me and I will show up. <laughs> no, I'm the opposite when it comes to travel. How funny. Yeah. I, I'm definitely the other. I'm the plan everything for everyone. But I guess because I like to, I feel like I'm like a, uh, a tour guide that's like that'd probably be the mm. ideal job for me it's a tour guide or like a travel agent if they made any money but hold on one second. <laughs> oh there we go that's better <laughs> let's see i have to plan things for travel yeah it's nice when people plan things for me but they're so used to me doing it that they very rarely do so <laughs> But it's like, I end up being the person planning. Although a few of my friends, including Shell, so don't say anything, Shell, are, are getting better about planning things. <laughs> Where's your favorite place you've traveled to? Because you, you've traveled quite a bit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, my favorite place? That's a hard <sighs> question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me think about that one. Well, Mary says, my partner took me on a trip to Seattle. Yes. But not being in charge kind of stressed me out. Yeah, your vlog was fantastic on that, Mary. I was really excited for you. Congratulations, by the way. She got engaged while she was there. Oh. And she'll. <laughs> See, I, I, I don't want. I don't want to do the logistics part of it, like the getting there and where to stay. I don't want to do any of that. But like once we, we get there, I want to be in charge. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> like, because like, I will go. Way. So, like, I, before I go somewhere, because we were supposed to go um, to Portland and Seattle in February, and then Dallas couldn't get its crap together when it snowed, so we didn't get to go. Um, not, not still bitter. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm still talking about it four months later. Um, but, like, I had a map that I had created for each of the cities where I had like found cool places, cool restaurants, where all the bookstores were, mm -hmm. like different things like that, that I wanted to do. And so like, I will go ham on making like a list of all of the possibilities. And then when we get there, I'm just like, here are all my suggestions and we can just like, you know, go to different places. But I just don't want to do the logistics. I hate flight picking out flights like that makes me want to so, scream yeah it, it really is no fun oh thank you i'm glad you had a good trip that seattle is a beautiful city um mary also feels loves being in charge <laughs> <laughs> i've gotten better at that in the past i would plan a trip when i was younger i would plan a trip and i would have not enough options and then of course when it didn't go right because i'd spent so much time planning it i would get disappointed and and it's like that defeats the purpose you know of it defeats the purpose of of planning it going on a trip you know you want to have a good time but then when I've, as i've gotten older i've realized like just 
make other suggestions because not everybody likes to do everything that you like to do, Amy. So then I've gotten better at making like an itinerary, like what you do, where you have all these options. Like these are the things that these are good places to eat at. These are good activities to do. And having all those, you know, excess options makes it a lot less stress for me feeling like I failed in some way of planning a good trip, you know? So. Yeah. I like to have like, I like to have a, uh, options that I know what to expect and then it's like, but we can choose from any of those and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But at least I like know what to expect instead of like we get there and we're walking around and we're going, I'm hungry and I don't know where to go. I've already got, you know, 10 places within a certain radius of where we're staying or something like that that are options. Yeah, yeah because otherwise you feel like you've wasted a lot of time. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you make the most of your time if you've done a little bit of research beforehand. Yeah, or you end up at a at a restaurant that's terrible and it's really expensive and you're miserable because for one, you were starving and you found the place that was open and it wasn't good. And you're like, what a waste of, you know, it just feels horrible. Yeah. I don't like that feeling either. Let's see, guessing you guys are done. We will probably do one more sprint. Yeah, probably one more. Our biggest fights. Yeah. Shell and I's biggest, because Shell and I have very, she's my friend since we've been friends since high school and we have very different interests when it comes to where we want to travel. So when we've gone on tra trips together, some of our biggest fights have been like, not us being mad at doing, not doing it, but like me trying to please her and her saying, I don't need you to please me when it comes to the trip because I'm, I'm a planner. So I'm like, but you're supposed to be having a good time. I plan this whole trip. And she's, you know, she understandably has things that are interesting, you know, and she doesn't want me to be stressed. So we're like basically yelling at each other because I want her to have a good time because I planned this and I feel bad. I feel guilty that she's not having a good time. And she's like, you don't need to please me. Da -da -da -da. Let's just have a, you know, let's just, you know, and so it's that, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and you know, when you're on a trip and the stress, the stress level yeah. gets up sometimes. And that's, yeah, that's some of them. Oh yeah. Okay. Just join, trying to find, finish hide. Ooh, that one's really popular right now. Oh. That's one I've, it's that yellow cover that looks like it has like a. Oh, I think that is a uh, literally, literally dead book club pick for this month or next yeah. month or something. Yeah. I think I saw that. It, everybody's really excited about it so good that it's turning out well for you yeah yeah, yeah i love travel well so okay okay so i was thinking about it and i've i've really done some amazing trips i've been to some really cool places but i did study abro abroad um for a month in the summer in Sevilla in Spain. And I think that that's probably one of my favorite trips because I got to spend time there and really get to know the city. And I got to meet people there from Spain. And I got to, you know, like it was, I got to feel like I belonged for mm, a time. Yeah. Like, like that's a unique experience that you don't get when you're only in a place for a week. Yeah, I did that. My school had a, what they called J term, um, which is like you do an internship, you travel, or you have like a, a one off class that's like a, a seminar kind of thing. Um, and I went to Germany two years in a row, went to Berlin the first year and um, Munich the second year. And I loved Munich. So we were in Munich for, I think four weeks and like, ugh, there's nothing like being in a place for, so that you start to feel comfortable with like the area and you can be like, Oh, you know, there's the little corner shop or whatever. It just, yeah, I agree. There's something different about that than regular travel. Yeah. It, it almost makes me want to just like, okay, I'm going to go spend a year of my life here. You're, I mean, it's completely unrealistic, <laughs> but it would be nice to be able to go, okay, I'm going to spend a year of my life here. I mean, and, and just like to have those experiences yeah. to get, you know, to like get, become part of that community and part of that culture for, even if it's a short period of time, like it's still there. It, makes the experience so much more rich and you actually get to enjoy the culture a lot more than you do if you're only there for a week or so. So yeah, that's, I would have to say that because, and I, I, I look forward to going back, like just visiting. Yeah. for me, it'll feel nostalgic because I spent a little extra time there, you know, made friends, no people. Yes. First one, the cover and yeah, I'm reading it for Kayla's book club. 
Yes, Sevilla is so beautiful. Yes. And if you haven't been, have you been to Spain? Mm -mm. I recommend Sevilla. I think it doesn't get visited as much as some of the other, you know, like Madrid or Barcelona, but Sevilla is stunning and, but more small. So it's got this cozy feel. It's a very relaxed vibe to it, but it's also got a lot of historical interest. It's really beautiful. I would as well recommend listening to Ann Bogle's podcast. Amazing. Fave podcast. That's okay. So we've got two votes for what should I read next? Write that down too. Modern Mrs. Darcy. What should I read next? Mary did a semester in Argentina and absolutely agree. Having to actually live there for a little bit makes a big difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had day trips too, Jenny. I went to France for mine. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. My best friend studied abroad in Paris and I am so jealous. She spent an entire semester there. That's the one thing about my college experience that I regret is not spending a semester abroad. No, two. That and not taking pottery, but we've remedied the pottery one. <laughs> You're taking care of that now. I'm taking care of it now. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's, yeah. I, I would love to spend more time. You know, it was, mine was just a summer, a summer course. So really we were only there for a month, but you know, people who get to spend like a whole year, like that's incredible. Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to be a teacher, go teach English in different countries. Yeah, I could. That's a possibility. More likely I will travel during the summertime and just spend three months at a time in different places or something along those lines. So Doris is going to be, I, I'm assuming she's teaching English in China. She's going to China, Doris so cool. from Aldi Books. Yep. That's incredible. I know. That's that, so cool. That is so exciting. That's really, really exciting. I know someone who's teaching in Singapore and she's from the UK and it's like super cool. Just A super bakery cool. in France. Okay. That's next level. That's the next level. That is. That is. That, you, you won. You won. <laughs> we cannot top that. That is, I mean, a French bakery, nonetheless. I would I never leave. They would be stuck with me for life. Yeah. Adopt me. I'm part of your family now. <laughs> Did they have a cute, oh, Becca's married, but like, you know, <laughs> they have a cute brother for Amy. <laughs> <laughs> what are we reading? Such main character energy. <laughs> I did life complete. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we could top that, so now we just have to sprint. <laughs> I guess it's time, guys. This is it. That was the end of the conversation. Back of one. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what chaos we bring now. <laughs> oh, we're back in the pink. Oh, oh it's twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. All we're, right. We're ending out. I like how they got shorter and shorter. Like this, yeah. we we we're just sixty, fifty-five, forty. We did good though. We oh, did good as far as like we got some pretty serious sprints in. And I hardly get any books read during sprints, typically. This time around, I did. <laughs> Let's see. Write novels about that exact. Oh, seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Are you liking the guy, Jenny? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you should have seen her face during the last sprint. It was fantastic. <laughs> same. Honestly, I same. I, I'm... We got to save face here by going to sprints. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go with 37 then, right? Yeah. Yep. Math is just getting better and better. Okay. All right. Well, I hope everybody has the most what successful next. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> no, you're back here. There you are. Okay. I was like, am I, is my internet going to crap out again? <laughs> Didn't. You just need to stop. You need to stop with these comments. <laughs> You're just, just rubbing it in now. Kill me? <laughs> <sighs> That's 
sounds like a dream. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Happy sprinting everyone. And we'll just be drooling over here while we're sprinting. Yes. <laughs>
Hello. It's going to take everything in me not to stay up and finish this daggum book tonight. <laughs> that would be it's poor. Like late for you, isn't it? It's, it's 930, yeah. <laughs> that would be a poor <laughs> idea. How much more? You still got a bit left. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, less than 100 pages, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's realistic. <laughs> Probably not wise, that's for sure. <laughs> but no, I'm it's gonna... not. Oh, yay! <laughs> yeah, perfect. I uh, That was perfect. We just ended, ended just in time. <laughs> like, I feel like I should have read more than a manga during this, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised how much I read. I usually don't yeah. read that much in a night, but sprints are effective. <laughs> Especially are. when I'm like part of it instead of just watching, because then sometimes I'll be like, we're going to sprint. And I'm like, cool, I'll watch three YouTube videos. Yeah. Or I'll do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, okay, it's time to sprint. Let's go get, let's go do stuff around the house. You know, like the actual sprint doesn't happen. Yeah. It's fun though. Sprints are fun. They're a lot of fun. I'm so you haven't in the time that you've been on BookTube, you haven't ever attempted, huh? No, I haven't. And I've I, like in the last probably six months, I've watched so many of them because I just enjoy them so much. And I have to say, like after this, I enjoy being part of them even more. So yeah, I I may have to do sprints on my channel at some point. Good. Yeah, absolutely. You should. That's that's incredible. That's exciting. Yeah, this was so much fun. Thank you yeah. for for inviting me. This was a <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm so happy that you said that in your vlog. I'm really, really happy that you <laughs> me did. Me too. <laughs> it worked out. 42 pages and congrats. Thank you. <laughs> the temptation to finish part two of Dune tonight could lead me to staying up. I totally understand that. I feel <laughs> it. <laughs> You guys might be up staying, staying up late tonight. <laughs> that was my issue in the last sprint. Got distracted and hardly read. Yeah. I definitely, that definitely happens for me yeah. with sprints when I'm watching them. Especially the ones where I'm not actively commenting because a lot of the bigger sprints with the bigger channels, I don't, you know, they're, they've got those channels, those chats are going so quickly that I can't even read them, let alone make any kind of, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I was watching uh, Allie from Hardback Hoarder was doing like a 24 hour live stream Ooh. of yeah. her reading uh, House of Sky and Breath. And so she was she was live streaming until she finished it. And yeah. she was like, I'm so overwhelmed by the comments. I do not usually get this many comments and I cannot feasibly read them all. And I am sorry. And I was like, yeah, that's that's chaos. Yeah. I like when I can read, I can read them and they're manageable. I don't know how people handle it otherwise, you know? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel like you get to talk to all the people. Yeah. I mean, that feels like the, you know, part of the point of, of live streaming or having sprints. Oh, thank you. Aww, little fanny thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. That's a cute name. I know. <laughs> I love sprints, but I especially love smaller creator sprints because if there are too many people, I can't even start. Yeah. Yeah. I, I completely agree. Yeah. And it's funny because when you do sprints, you, you know, you, you have people who are in the sprints with you, people who are watching the sprints. And a lot of times with the comments and stuff, you, it almost feels like you create your own little mini culture within that sprint. And, you know, you'll get on a topic or something will happen and you guys are all just kind of talking about the same thing. And it, you know, even if they're not in the actual video sprint, you know, the part where they're being seen, like it still feels like you're, you got your little, your little community there in the sprint. And I really like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. To play. Oh, well then people start paying to be able to see you. Mm. They were talking about that on one of the other sprints and most of them had never heard of it. And I was like, that's because you don't watch Animal Crossing creators. Because <laughs> I used to watch Animal Crossing like live streams and it was just like a constant super chats. And I was like, man, these people like have to make this one guy. I mean, he, he probably makes thousands of dollars per live stream. And I'm like, that's so crazy. 
that is. I just can't think of anything I, I want to, I want, I, don't, I can't think of a comment that I want to be shared so much that I'm going to, I mean, granted, I know that you're partially paying for their time and, and for them, yeah. you know, but at the same time, I'm like, but I, I wouldn't want to put up a comment that just to me. Like, no, I'm like, like, I'd rather just subscribe to somebody's Patreon. Like that's, that's where I, I land. <laughs> that makes way more sense. That makes absolutely way more sense. And, but you know, to each their own. Yeah, which I've found really fascinating about the booktube world anyways, because everybody has different ways that they like to consume it, the way they like to interact with it and mm -hmm. interact with people. So like it's it's been a really fun experience and I've learned so much. Yeah, it's really interesting. Dean doesn't know what Super Chat is. <laughs> it's where you can pay money and it'll like highlight it so that they definitely see your comment during a live yeah. stream. Yeah, and um, don't worry, Jean. I got you. See, look, <laughs> my, I mean, my, my chats, my channels are very nice, nice and small, so I don't have any problems. <laughs> but yeah, I thought about that. Like, you know, as you get larger, everybody gets a little larger as they continue on. Like, you know, same with comments. Like, I res I try to respond to all my comments. It may take me a week, a week and a half. But I'm getting to the point where it's getting really hard to keep up with that, and I. I I like commenting, you know, responding to the comments because that's where I get a lot of those conversations with my followers. But at the same time, it does get a little overwhelming at times when I get really behind on the comments. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm like, at what point do you people start saying, well, I can't comment on everything? I know. Is that why there is a money bar on the chat line? I think so. I was like, maybe I've never used it. So I, I don't, don't actually either. know how, how that happens yeah. yep because she's monetized now okay i didn't realize that was what i don't pay attention to that <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah i'm happy to jean <laughs> i like that twitch has free sub with amazon compared to youtube yeah you that... have to pay for the members uh, you have to pay for the membership thing Mm. I don't know how I've only I've literally been on, been on Twitch like twice so I don't actually know how Twitch functions <laughs> I know it's really rowdy over there <laughs> is it just for video games or other people do mm -hmm. other okay they do a lot of things um, they have people do reading sprints on Twitch people do like game you know the gaming stuff and I guess somebody said on one of the streams I was listening to that people on Twitch, like just chatting is like the, the highest hmm. concentration of Twitch streamers. And I was like, I had no idea. <laughs> so like just chatting with people like random yeah, I guess. people. Huh. Okay. I don't know if I'd have enough. And Amy says, ah, okay. I don't know if I'd have enough to say to just, <laughs> just chat. I don't know. Okay. It's so, amazing the things that, that people can do on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I understand. My cousin's really gotten to mukbang, mukbang oh, for yeah. a while. And I was, that was something I had never had experience with before. And I was like, huh, I love the concept of it. But it is very interesting and different when you, it's, well, it made sense, especially during the pandemic, too. Like, you get to have a dinner with someone. But Yeah. <laughs> you have a super chat. Look at that. It's my first one. <laughs> so I can pay special attention. Shall I give you enough attention? You don't need any more. <laughs> but I'll give you $2 worth. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> well, I guess I got to leave that one up the rest of the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no, I'm blushing. My goodness. That was exciting. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> She's so silly. Let's see. Oh, no, I switched over. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the sprint super. Yes, and so make sure everybody, everybody, you should already be subscribed to Jenny over, over here. <laughs> but if you're not, please go check out her channel. Go check out her vlogs. They're amazing, and her game is incredible. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. Go check out Jenny. She's, she's so cool, and she has so many wonderful, unique hobbies that you do a lot of good b-roll in your vlogs where you're showing 
your pottery and your garden and your baby. <laughs> so Thank you. Please go check her out. Oh, this was fun. Even the full two dollars. Oh, I'm sure I get a percentage. I don't I'm know. Sure. <laughs> you kidding? YouTube probably gets most of it. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know how that works, so we'll find out, and I'll I'll, I'll report back to you, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> a percentage shell believes. Yes, I love the game. I didn't realize it wasn't subscribe. Oh, well, oh. you are. <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And I really appreciate being your first, first friend. <laughs> exciting. Yeah, this was very, very fun. <laughs> well, if I do sprints on my channel, I'll be sure to extend an invite. <laughs> thank you. That'd be, I would love to. I would love it. And yeah, I hope you do. I helped um, Amy. She was on my channel for once before she felt comfortable enough to do her own sprints and she did and she's been doing her own sprints now so it'll become a thing you'll be sprinting all the time awesome wow. <laughs> let's see uh thank you for the sprints it's the only way i get through books oh well good i'm glad that we helped you gene <laughs> all right well thank you everybody and we will talk to you later bye Oops, cancel. Wait, I did it wrong. <laughs>